drugs. While the arrival of the topless woman painted red, white, and blue seeking tips is relatively new, costumed characters such as Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Goofy, Iron Man, Thor, and Betty Boop have sidled up to tourists in Times Square for years for pictures and a quick buck. A Reuters witness could not find any painted topless women walking in the area on Thursday following a media storm over reports they were behaving aggressively. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Supreme Court sidekick, Kid Justice, is killed by mad genius Dr. Contempto. Thousands of elderly Japanese Americans are rounded up for an internment camp's 70th reunion. And a report confirms the habitat of Bengal tigers is now down to a studio apartment in Jaipur, India. As it was once prophesied in the weekly news recap videos of old, here now it emerges before your very eyes. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local man Matthew Hunker announced this week that he has such strong brand loyalty to Mazda that he's willing to kill for the Japanese car brand. Hunker told reporters that if he hears anyone say anything negative about Mazda's cutting-edge features, or if anyone places any other car brand above the award-winning line of 2013 Mazdas, he will, quote, personally beat them to death. You think I wouldn't slit your goddamn throat in the name of Mazda? You think I'm f***ing around? Go ahead, say something bad about the top-rated Mazda 6, or the award-winning CX-5. See what f***ing happens. I f***ing dare you. You think I'm afraid to go to jail? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you're invited here to join us on the radio waves. Talk about whatever's on your mind. Coming up, though, we've got stuff that we brought to the table that you might find interesting and worthy of discussing. Is Tinder going to be the end of regular dating? That is what Danica is going to be talking with us about here. It's Ian, Danica, and Chris Cantwell now joining the Friday edition of the show. Chris, welcome. Good to be here, man. Or I should say welcome back. Uh, yeah. It's it's good to have you back on here. And you're actually uh, kind of sacrificing a little bit of a radical agenda to be here tonight. So thank you for, for that. Yeah, I usually do it Fridays from 5 to 7 p.m. And then uh, when you asked me to come in and do Fridays, I said, all right, uh, you know, Free Talk Live has a slightly larger audience, shall we say, than Radical Agenda. It does. Uh, and I think you're a great fit for a Friday night. You know, it's uh, Friday nights have always been a little different on Free Talk Live, you get that end of the week crowd, the people who just grab their paycheck and they're going to blow as much of it as they possibly can here tonight. They're driving around, maybe listening to Free Talk Live. Or maybe they're chilling at home with a beer. I mean, or something of their preference. Exactly. So uh, we're glad you are out there joining us here tonight. In fact, you know, let's talk about Friday night, date night. Uh, you know, the weekends are usually a good time for that. And of course, uh, we talked, I think it was last Friday, about the idea that. Tinder and uh, these online dating apps, because I guess Tinder isn't really a dating app, isn't it? Just for hookups. It's supposed to be. Part? It's it was created specifically for hooking up. Although I have heard people that have used it and have subsequently gone out on a steady relationship with it. But yeah, I've heard about that. So it can go too. either way. I mean, it is what you want to use it for, I suppose. Yeah, you can't. I don't think you can have a very long description in there, right? It's 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 very limited. You're basically just swiping to look at pictures, right? I don't right. know. Right. I've never used it, but I I know how it works. So you swipe right, being that like this guy or girl is really good. You swipe mm. left, saying no thanks. But they it's get, just based on their picture. It's not like right, right. any first, kind of text. You, you, first you do have you do have a very brief like description, but you don't see that as you're swiping back mm -hmm. and forth right and so left says no and then at some point the other person gets a notification saying hey this person liked or swiped on your picture mm -hmm. and then you can send them a message and then that's when you, you can start making plans to hook up and by hook up we mean have sex yes. essentially on a, uh, a one night stand or maybe multiple nights uh in a you know sure. for these two people whatever they, they feel like if they gel if it if it works out um, but the the story that I think it was last Friday night wasn't that when we were talking about the uh, the clubs was that Friday night maybe clubs? it wasn't I, no uh, it doesn't sound well Friday. anyway so there was another story that was sort of related to this because your story Danica is about is Tinder killing dating right uh, but sort of related was are these online dating sites killing the club industry. So, oh, okay. That's that's starting to jog some memory. I, I think we briefly touched about that. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently in the UK and also in the United States, clubs are having a real difficult time. Something like 50% of clubs have closed down in the UK in the last decade. And the promoters, the people who are running these clubs are blaming these online dating apps because, well, 
why would somebody want to go meet in a crowded, loud bar or club or whatever? You can't talk to anybody in a situation like that. You can't actually really do a good job of meeting somebody and discovering common interests. Yeah, I never understood that sort of like, let's go to a place where the music is so loud that we can't even communicate with each other Me and either. then right. try to find a, a love interest. It's the craziest thing in the world. I mean, I guess if you dance and, you know, you're rubbing up against somebody and then she's like no, not screaming to get that <laughs> hard thing away from her and then, then you know, you might be able to hook up that way. Uh, but I was never much of a dancer, so that never much yeah. appealed to me. I used to like to go to like the hole in the wall bar and, you know, and just I buy a girl a drink or something like that. If and, the know, music's not out. cranking, at least you could have a conversation at a bar. Like yeah, that. exactly. I mean, even to go to like a karaoke night or something like that, you know, personalities and whatnot, you get to, uh, you know, communicate with people at least in between songs. But if you've got, even even if you have like a band and the music is just blaring to the point that you can't hear anybody, you know, I'm a talker. That does not work right. for me. Yeah. Well, if you're going to go hear a band, I mean, you're not going there to have good conversation. You, That's you, true. You have these certain clubs and they appeal to a certain crowd. You, you can have your dive bar where you want to go and get a nice drink, maybe talk to the bartender about how your job was terrible this week. Sometimes you want to go to the club and dance with your friends and maybe go home with somebody. But either, and sometimes you want to go catch a live show. And either way, all you really begin with as far as having in common with somebody is we like the same band or the same kind of music or the same kind of alcohol, right? Because when you're going to these places, Typically, there yeah. really isn't anything else that you have in common necessarily with the person that you're randomly walking up to. Whereas online dating does allow for that to happen. You know, you can learn more about your match, if you will. But now the story that you're going to bring to the table here is saying that Tinder is killing online dating. Or is it? We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. You can share your thoughts here tonight at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's go to the phones first, though. We've got Mike listening in San Antonio. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Mike in San Antonio. Going once. Mike in San Antonio going twice. Sometimes there's some technical difficulties behind the scenes at the network. Maybe there's a switch that hasn't been flipped. We're going to put Mike back on hold and see if we can get him uh, to either a better line or figure out what's going on in the background. So, meanwhile, Danica, let's jump into your story. Where is it coming from, first of all, if you don't mind? Uh, this is coming from Vanity Fair, actually. Okay, sure. Okay. As the polar ice caps melt and the Earth turns around the, the supposedly the sixth extinction... Another unprecedented phenomenon is taking place in the realm of sex. Hookup culture, which has been around for about 100 years, has collided with dating apps, which have acted like a wayward meter onto the now dinosaur-like rituals of courtship. A wayward what? I'm sorry. Couldn't. Wayward meteor on the now dinosaur-like rituals of courtship. Gotcha. So he's drawing a comparison to the meteor, wiping out the dinosaurs, such as Tinder wiping out Match.com and regular dating or even just plain old good old-fashioned courtship. I uh, I think that people have been hooking up for more than 100 years. I yeah. doubt the accuracy of this article. Oh, I'm sure they have, <laughs> but I mean, like, really documented hooking up I'm probably is more recent. But yeah, I, um, Justin Garcia, a research scientist at Indiana University's Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, Gender, and Production, says there have been two major transitions in heterosexual mating. Mating, sorry. In the last 4 million years, the first was about 10,000 to 15,000 years ago in the agricultural revolution, which we became less migratory and more settled. And the second major transition is with the rise of the Internet. People used to meet their partners th through proximity, through family and friends, but now Internet meeting is surpassing every other form. As soon as people Which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just... It's, it makes so much sense to meet people online. It's a way to whittle out a lot of the people that you would otherwise waste your time with, randomly uh, clicking with folks in bars, and you can automatically find people that are more compatible with you, at least intellectually. Sure. Whether, you, whether you're going to have whatever that uh, vibe is uh, that you, know, you don't really find out until you meet somebody, whether you're going to actually work with that person uh, and sort of gel, if you will, as a good match. You still don't really know until you actually meet somebody in real life, but it's certainly a good way to, I think, whittle down the playing field. Well, sure. And, you know, online and online dating, you can pick, okay, I am attracted to this kind of style of body. You know, this is my interest and you throw it on there and see what comes up. I mean, it's, it's certainly much easier than just walking into a bar and hoping to meet someone that you might click with. Yeah, you can even go on like Ashley Madison and look specifically for married women. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ashley Madison. <laughs> you know, the, sh the shame about the Ashley Madison thing is that they didn't, apparently they claim they never verify emails. So the for those that don't know, Ashley Madison's this website that's designed to help you cheat on your current partner. 
uh, and that was the idea. There were claims that the site was just a big scam, that there were almost no women on there, and that the whole thing was just a way to extract money from, you know, horny, cheating, wanting to cheat guys. Uh, and that may be true. But they apparently didn't require an email verification, so anybody who wanted to could take anyone's email address and use that to sign up for That's the site, interesting. which would have resulted in that email address, possibly your email address, being in their list of hacked uh, emails because the uh. site got hacked. They, there, were, there was, I think, nearly 10 gigabytes of hacked data that was released this week on the darknet. And so people have been mining that data to see whose emails are in there. But really, even if you find a juicy sounding email, it doesn't necessarily mean that person was actually using I, the site. I saw an article that actually went through the data and, and it posted, uh, they were saying how Republicans and Democrats behaved on uh, on Ashley Madison. Oh, and wow. they had pointed out there was like a whole bunch of things that were at WhiteHouse.gov email addresses. <laughs> but they were like misspellings of Barack Obama's name and yeah. all of this stuff. Like you imagine that this was stupid. And I and I have I have a um an Ashley Madison account. I I have never been married. I have no kids or whatever. But I just thought it'd be a good way to meet w women with dirty knees. And so <laughs> I had signed up for this thing a long time ago. And it was so stupid. I realized it was spam immediately because before I even uploaded a photograph, I'm getting all of these like messages from bots, basically, right? Like, oh, you're so cute. I really want to hook up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, there's got to be, you know, to hold that thought, Chris. We're gonna come back more with Chris Cantwell and Danica. And Ian on Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. 
The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work dot I-T slash FTL. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Cantwell. We are talking about dating. Is the uh, the world of dating, online dating, being changed by Tinder and its ilk? These uh, swiping apps where you swipe left or right, depending on whether you are finding someone attractive, and then it hooks you up with that other person if they, I, I guess, feel the same way Yes, about you. essentially. And the girls are affectionately called Tinderellas. I'm not sure if there is a uh, <laughs> male version of that, but it's kind of amusing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to hear more about that here in a moment. Sure. Of course, you can share your thoughts with us at 855-450-FREE. We're going to try the phones here again. I think that things might be remedied with whatever the difficulty was. Let's try Mike one more time in San Antonio. Mike, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can yes. you guys hear me now? Yes. We can hear you now. Go ahead, Great. sir. Awesome. Well, I just wanted to welcome Cantwell back to the show. I think that's awesome that you guys have him back on. Aw, Thanks, nice. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the reason I was calling, though, uh, a couple, I think it was a couple of days ago, you guys had Derek J on, and you were discussing, like, uh, private prisons um, in a voluntary society. Sure. Um, I had a, I had a kind of a, a concern about that because I, I feel like one of the reasons um, that our laws are the way they are now is because it's kind of due to private prisons. Um, in, in essence, you know, making a profit off of off of people being imprisoned, it seems like it would uh, it would it would motivate people to make more laws. I guess if that makes sense. Well, I mean, the the, the situation that you have now, I mean. It's crazy to call these prisons private prisons, right? If you're they're they're entirely funded by the state. They're 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 state institutions that are just privatizing the the resources, right? They're saying, "Okay, well, we're going we're still going to pay for this 100% with taxpayer money, but we're going to let somebody put this in their pocket and and sort of run it like a business with a singular customer." It's not like uh it's not like Visa and Mastercard are going out and uh you know prosecuting people for credit card fraud privately and then paying this prison to house their, you know, uh, their their predators. This is the government is going and saying, well, we're going to arrest people for marijuana possession and throw them in a cage, and we're going to pay this company to do it for us. Yeah, I think that uh, what Mike is saying is accurate in the t in today's paradigm, where privatized prisons, like you're talking about, Chris, are uh, approved by the government. So it's just it's basically no different than some other government monopoly contract that they sort of contract out. It's sort of like a charter prison almost, like a charter school. Um, and so they could do a better job than the government or they could do a worse job than the government. Some charter schools do a better job than the government schools. Some do a, a worse job. But either way, there's no real market competition there. It's not an actual truly private enterprise. It exists based on the existence of the government. But one of the things that is, is true today is that the private prisons of today certainly have an incentive to advocate for more laws. I mean, that's that means bigger budgets for them, just like it does the government prisons. Exactly. So that is true. But keep in mind that in a truly voluntary society that we're talking about here, this was the discussion we were having on Monday, is what would the prisons be like, or would there be prisons, and what would they look like in the absence of the state? What, what does that look like? Because as we get closer towards having no state, then we're going to also be getting rid of terrible laws like the war on drugs and other things like the war on prostitution and other nonviolent uh, victimless crimes, gambling, you know, all kinds of things can put someone behind bars today that don't actually involve a victim. So if the private prison of the future that is doesn't exist in the world of governments 
uh, does exist in some way, I expect that it would only exist to really keep the most ultimately bad, dangerous, violent characters out of society and it wouldn't be loaded up with a bunch of potheads. Yeah, and I imagine that if you, they, they're that violent, dangerous, terrible people, we'll probably just kill them. But the, somebody <clears> will eventually. Yeah, uh, the, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine that there'd be a great deal of use for prisons in the absence of the state. I mean, if you picture like a picture a Galt Gulch, right? You've got some private property, and this guy is going to set up a community. He's going to buy up some vast swaths of land, and uh, and he's going to build some houses on them, and he's going to say, "Hey, you can come live in my you know community, and here are the rules for the community." And we might have, you know, there might be a, uh, you know, some holding cells there that, you know, if you get if you get too drunk and the mm -hmm. rules are that you can't be, you know, drunk in public or whatever in this private setting, then we're going to throw you in the drunk tank for yep. a little while or something like that. But I can't imagine what the 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 profit motive would be in the absence of the state for keeping people in cages for decades. Right. There's just no nobody would ever pay for that. I mean, even if even if it's a situation of. Um, you know, I have an insurance policy and a protection agency of some sort. You know, I have a security company. They're going to make sure that uh, if anybody comes breaks into my house, that they go out and find the guy and reimburse me for my property. What profit motive there could possibly be in that industry for keeping somebody in a cage and fed and taken care of for 20 years? I mean, that's a hugely expensive, you know, endeavor sure. that I don't imagine would really do a whole lot to reimburse victims of crime. I think it would be more restitution oriented. Or, like I said, if we're dealing with people who are just really like threats to the survival of a, you know, a community, then I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody's going to shoot them. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, that, that kind of answers my question, I think. Um, I guess one thing I was kind of concerned about is if you have like a, a dispute resolution um, company that, you know, maybe they would try to find some motive to um, to say somebody to say somebody is guilty and have, you know, a profit motive behind that if they have some sort of stake in a company that makes money off of imprisoning people. I but guess that I don't, I don't so you're see missing how... competition as, uh, as a check on corruption, right? So right now we've got incredibly corrupt courts right. because there's no real check on them. You have to fund them. You have to send people to these government courts. And so in a free market where we actually had a market injustice, then uh, the market of justice, if you will, uh, then there would be choices, presumably, that one could go with as far as the arbitrator, as far as, you know, a different choice for any kind of institution of jailing or whatever that would end up looking like. Because I agree with Chris that it would end up being focused on restitution and only the most dangerous people would likely be kept out of society. Although certainly if Chris gets his way, they'd be turned loose and, and then the first... <laughs> Uh, the first person to come across them that wants to defend themselves against an outlaw would, I guess, be able to do that. Uh, but I think that, you know, you've got to factor in competition, and with competition comes more likely a uh, hood of being honest. And who would want to pick uh, an arbitrator that has a reputation for being dishonest or corrupt? I mean, that's just who's going to want to pick that because you, you get to choose your arbitrators in a voluntary society. Or even inept. I mean, if we look at, you know, today, I mean, what, you know, lots of different figures abound as to how many innocent people are in jail right now. And the government uh, system of determining guilt does not seem to be the most effective one. And so if you had a system where there's a, a market competition, it's not in your best interest to pay for uh, something that's going to go out and, uh, and, and just go hold somebody accountable for the sake of holding holding somebody accountable, right? And going out and, you know, incarcerating the wrong people or penalizing the wrong people, that would not be a, a good service to you. It would not rid the society of the criminal element. It would not bring uh, criminals to justice. It would just be locking up innocent people. And thus, it would not make sense for you to purchase a service that did such a thing. The only way that you could pull that off is with the scheme of taxation where people are compelled to pay for it, whether they like the service or not. Mike, thanks for your call. Good thoughts tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about private prisons, or what that system would look like. Because we really don't know. I mean, we can sit here and speculate as to, whoa, what the market would do with, mm -hmm. if it actually had the purview over protection and justice. And we can speculate based on some, you know, decent inputs and some evidence of existing uh, arbitration systems and existing private uh, protections. Like, uh, let's see, there's that, there's that group out in Detroit. And uh, I think Threat Management Center is what they're called. 
there's some people doing some interesting, innovative things in those areas. But ultimately, we don't know what true free market competition would bring. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round-trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more, and I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is cooling, down $5 to $1,158 per ounce. Silver is also down $0.15 cents to $15.48 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $232 U.S. dollars. Roberts & Roberts has been helping people to buy metals for nearly 40 years. If you would like more information, give us a call, 800-874-9760, or visit us online at rrbi.co. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. The town wants him to stop. So he's charged with a misdemeanor and could spend six months in jail. 71 years old. Nice folks blind. there. He wouldn't let blind. That's his source of blind living. old man sells some firewood out of his front yard. Nice. So now you're looking at having to go out, get a firewood permit, which is going to cost you X amount of dollars a year, and who knows how much research to try and yep. uh, you know figure out how to get the permit. Just then doing whatever go, they can to stop industry. Yeah, then you have to go and get uh, get your education so you can actually run the saw, and then you have to get a variance on your property so you can actually sell the firewood from your property. Oh, and don't forget, if you have a storefront, then you have to pay, what, five, six, $700 a month in rent, maybe $4,000 a month in rent, depending on what city you have an occupational in. license, too. Aggression like this by these government people happens all across the country and you have to ask how much more are you willing to put up with before you finally say no free talk live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm you can interact with other lrn listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm that's forum.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here on the radio waves, and you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, maybe if you're going to the cinemas, if you go to one particular company, they're going to search your bags. And I guess that ties into our dating conversation that we'll come back to here in a moment. We're continuing with your phone calls first. Also, uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers 
of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. They're constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. Get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. That's a really good website, Freedom Phoenix. Yeah. Lots of good info, always loaded with new stuff. They're Absolutely. almost as good as ChristopherCantwell.com, which is really a great site, too. You also have a fine site, Chris, and we'll talk more about <laughs> no that. No self-promoting I mean, whatsoever. Mm -mm. Uh, well, I want to give Chris more time to promote his site. We'll do that here in a little bit, talk about one of his latest articles. Uh, but first, let's go back to Matt. He's in, or go to Matt, rather, in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live, Matt, with Ian, Danica, and Chris. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. You're on the radio. Um, <laughs> hey! Hey. Um, my, uh, my question, I guess, is I don't have a lot of time to check out the presidency, but I've heard a lot of, the who? A lot of commotion about presidency? the pre presidency. Oh, so, you want to check out what the candidates or something? Uh, Trump. What um, about him? Go. I'll be back. Why Hello? shouldn't I vote for him? No, what, what about what about Trump? You said Trump. Says, and why should you Why shouldn't you vote for yeah. Trump? Is why, that the question? Why, why shouldn't I vote for Trump? Well, I would say that Did when you, you try you to come up with you guys come up with all kinds of things that I haven't heard of and I can't get my hands on because i'm so busy so i would say the reason that you shouldn't vote for donald trump is because he's a joke it's 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 a it's a show it's a it's a it's a circus this this guy and i and i tell you i appreciate him like ditching the whole political correctness thing i think that's mm -hmm. really like necessary i i sure. wish more candidates would do that and that's one thing that i really do appreciate about yeah, him. i gotta say i was refreshed i mean i didn't watch any of the debate i did see the one clip though where he refuses he's the only one on the stage who refuses to say that he will endorse whoever the Republican nominee is. Everybody yeah. else is lockstep with the party. Yeah, he was the only one. And he's the only one who raises his hand saying he refuses to uh, go along with that. So i got to give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah. But go ahead, Chris. But he, he will lose to Hillary Clinton is what's going to happen. If he if he wins the Republican nomination, then we will see a Hillary Clinton presidency in 2016, assuming Bernie Sanders does not skyrocket in the polls anytime soon. Isn't isn't Sanders beating Clinton in New, York, uh, New Hampshire? I think that he's like 10 points behind her. He's Closing the gap. I've heard. Um, uh, and last I checked, he the was. The worst one we want to see in presidency. I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, I think she's the worst one to see in in presidency. Is in my opinion. Well, uh, Hillary Clinton would certainly be about the worst case scenario, but I would say that Bernie Sanders would be worse. Um, Hillary That's a Clinton. Tough call. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. it's a tough call, but I'll tell you what. Like, I will seriously entertain leaving this country under a Hillary Clinton presidency. <laughs> I'm not screwing around. That woman. Uh, is, amen on that, brother. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not kidding. Uh, she's she's dangerous, and but D Bernie Sanders is more dangerous. He doesn't even you know mince his words about it. He's trying to turn us into North Korea, and and everybody's <laughs> cheering about it like this is a victory for freedom. And I'm and I've absolutely had it with these you know fake libertarian Bernie Sanders supporters. Uh, but you know, Hillary Clinton will win the. I don't think. I don't think we're in any actual danger of uh, Bernie Sanders getting elected. His problem is that he's radicalizing the Democratic Party. But but we are talking about. Uh, when you when you are trying to uh, nominate a Republican, you want somebody who's going to defeat the Democrat, and that should not be a difficult thing to do right now because America is sick of the of the of the track that this country is on. The people are re ready to have a Republican president after eight years of Barack Obama. But mm -hmm. if you put Donald Trump in that seat and you put him on the stage with Hillary Clinton, it will be one of the most entertaining debates that you have ever seen, and then you will have a Hillary Clinton presidency. <laughs> and I am not looking forward to that. Thanks, Matt, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Our toll-free number, if you want to join the conversation, 855-450-FREE. All right, so if it's not Donald Trump, Chris, uh, have you uh, anointed a Republican candidate for the <laughs> the presidency? This is hopeless. I mean, I, I did watch the debate. We actually did a special episode of Radical Agenda you where I was bastard. talking over the— Oh, over, that's fun. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We've done that here on Free Talk Live. I don't know if it was for a debate, but— we would do that in the past during like presidential uh, speeches and just kind of talk over them and comment yeah. as they 
We're when talking. the show was still uh, some garbage podcast, I did it with a demo and uh, Rapture. I think we did it during this the State of the Union address, and right. it was That's and it's fun. Do. It's it's a it's a riot to do. Now, unfortunately, the Republican debate was the intellectual property of Fox News, so I couldn't put it on my YouTube channel. But mm. I did have it on UStream, and it is up on the uh, the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, but uh, you know, watching these guys and the debate was just atrocious to begin with. Because first of all, you've got ten guys up there, and so there's no time for any of them to address an issue. Right. And and they're all getting asked individual questions that are separate from the question that they're asking the other candidates. So it's not a debate at all. It's, oh, wow. it's just, it's here's 30 interview. seconds to say something. Yeah. It's, it, it was ridiculous. There was a couple of times where they sort of like, you know, went out of turn and attacked each other. Rand Paul went after uh, um, uh, Chris Christie. There's a couple of things that were good, but it was uh, it was not very good. In any case, you know, I, I'd have to say, of course, the, the least of the evils is Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Yeah. But I'm just so completely uninterested in, in him at all right like yeah. I've, I've said like i'm not going to go out and try to you know give him a hard time or, or bad mouth him or you know give you this hardline anarchist position of don't vote voting is violence but at the same time like he does nothing for me at all he's just not as bad as the other guys i think that's uh, that about sums it up yeah i would say so i think Rand paul would be the hold your nose and vote candidate <laughs> um you know but I'm I'm getting tempted. Like I'm looking at what's going on, and I am tempted to try. Like I want to I want to get excited about Rand Paul. I really want to. But you are not. I am incapable of it, and and it's unfortunate because looking at this Republican lineup, it's it's a it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's what Marco Rubio, Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, and and what's going uh. to start happening is because there's so many of them in there that they don't have to you know, gain much to be ahead, right? Mm -hmm. And so what's eventually going to happen, in my prediction, is that Jeb Bush is, and, and Donald Trump are going to start paying people to drop out. That's what it'll eventually come to. Because these guys are just there trying to promote their book sales. They know they're not going to win the presidency. I mean, I mean, uh, Rick Santorum, how many times has this guy done this? <laughs> right. Rick yeah. Santorum, nobody, nobody in their right mind would vote for Rick Santorum. I hope Rick Santorum comes back to Keene. He was one of the only uh, presidential candidates who has, has even bothered to give an answer to our questions here in Keene, we've kind of uh, created a tradition of going after any presidential candidate of the Republican or Democratic parties that comes to town because in New Hampshire, they're constantly, you know, coming here due to it being the first state to have a primary. Yeah. And so New Hampshire is more important for that reason. And so they spent all this time campaigning here. And in 2012, we started by targeting uh, several of the candidates that were coming around at, at that time. And we've picked it up this year. And it was Rick Santorum who was dumb enough to actually respond to the question that I asked him, which was, have you Googled yourself? Oh. And so if you go to YouTube and you search for Rick Santorum Googled himself, I think you will probably find that video, which is pretty entertaining. I think it's up to like 40,000 views, which, you know, that's not bad for a, a libertarian entertainment YouTube video. Most of them, though, this year have been smart enough to not say anything at all. Like Jeb uh, was here in town yesterday, and uh, I actually had the opportunity to corner him twice on the way in and then also on the way out. And I, uh, I hit him with questions about encryption because I usually I know nothing about these candidates like until the day before they come to town and I'll, I'll put out on one of our social groups like, okay, what do I ask this guy? Yeah. And then people will feed me uh, news stories about how bad they are. And so uh, I picked the, the point about he is apparently against encryption. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So I, you know, I wanted to ask him questions about, you know, him being against encryption. Like, what do you got against privacy? Do you think the government should know all and see all? And of course, he, you know, completely ignored my questions. Uh, Daryl W. Perry was there as well, and he hit him up with a couple questions. You can see the video; it's up right now. If you go to freekeen.com, it is, I think, probably the most recent post. I just cranked it out uh, earlier today, so it's still fun to watch them be confronted with those questions. Yeah, you've come out to a couple of these so far, Chris. You weren't able to make it out to this one, unfortunately. But a lot of these guys will come back. So we missed Hillary. Uh, she came last time she was in Keene was uh, on 420, and so a bunch of us were in Concord for the 420 celebration. Oh, so we yeah, weren't able right. to uh, to hit Hillary. But almost everybody else we've uh, we've gotten if they've come through town. More coming up here. Check out the video at freekeen.com. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government? Be truly independent. Visit libertyoncall.org. Libertyoncall.org is a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Libertyoncall.org. Call today. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. CopLock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopLock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopLock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here on the air. The toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And you will have to send a contact request first. But once you do that, once we approve it, you're good to go to call us on Skype from that point forward. Whether you want to discuss dating and how is, or the question, I guess, on the table is whether or not dating as we know it is done for. What with the rise of apps like Tinder that are apparently geared simply towards hooking people up for sex. Uh, that seems to be the, the real drive with people using uh, Tinder. And of course, there are other apps that are like Tinder that are competing with it. There's uh, gay apps like Grindr. Yeah, that Grindr I know of. the same way. Um, I'm not sure of any other um like I guess there are several well, right there are, I know there are several ones for the gay community sure, so there's yeah. like one just for bears 
Uh, I, I think that's called Growler. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I want to get back into that story. You can also share your thoughts or experiences uh, with us. Maybe you've gone from the dating app stuff to, like, you know, the OkCupid or uh, Match.com and you've moved into the world of Tinder. How, what, what was the change like for you there? The toll free number 855 450 free. You're sharing, Danica, from some of a Vanity Fair piece about this. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, the article's talking with Justin Garcia. He's a research scientist at the Indiana University's Kinsey Research uh, in Sex, Gender, and Reproduction. So he was talking. Is that, is that the creator of the infamous Kinsey, Kinsey scale? Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How gay are you? On how, a scale of how one gay to ten. Are you? So he, so he was talking about how in the '90s, people when they went online would start using things like Craigslist and AOL chat rooms. Now we had talked about Craigslist. I, I was thinking that was more of an early 2000s hookup thing, but apparently Craigslist has it's been, been around. around for 20 years since 1995, according to Wikipedia. Oh, I feel so dated. I mean, I I have known of people going to the AOL chat rooms and chatting and eventually hooking up with somebody. Uh, I well, sure, back know. in the day of uh, BBSs, people would do that on sure, local yeah. uh, local dial-up modems. You could call with your computer. You could use your modem to call up on your phone line to call up another computer that would serve to you. <laughs> a, 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 a sort of not a, It wasn't a website. It was just like an interactive uh, bulletin board system, as they called it, which had messages and private messages and public messages and, and games that you could play and chat rooms in some cases. The fancier BBSs would actually have multiple lines and chat rooms. And I know for a fact there were people that were hooking up uh, or, or going on dates uh, through that. Service. I shudder to think what the gender ratio would have been on those systems. <laughs> you know... I can't really speak to it. I know that there were women involved. Um, I used to be sort of a co-system operator on some of those BBSs, but I, I was too young to actually go out to the parties that they would have. Yeah. And they did have them. And oh. I imagine those parties would have been absolutely intolerable if there weren't any uh, members of the opposite sex that were there. Yeah. So I, I know for a fact that I... I at the very least, that it's the big 10-line BBS that was in town in Sarasota, or actually it was five lines and five terminals, so the dude actually had computers set up all around his house, and he'd have people hanging out there all the time, just hanging out on his BBS. <laughs> but he would actually throw real-life parties as well, and uh, it's my understanding women were attending those, but I suspect you're right, Chris, that it was probably a, a sausage fest. Yeah, oh, yeah pretty, probably. pretty competitive environment, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, but nonetheless, people were meeting uh, before the days of the Internet through online uh, methods. Yeah. yeah. And I, you had mentioned the AOL chat rooms. I certainly did a, a, a great deal of that. That was, you know, in my early teens and uh, trying to, um, you know, get, uh, get gals. How'd that work <laughs> out for you? Yeah. Did I ever? Wait, I was it I, in local chats or something? Like, how yeah, would you... you would go to like you know like a New York chat room I'm from okay. New York, obviously. And so, uh, and so, you know, they had uh, New York or Long Island chat rooms. And uh, right, I don't know that I ever had any luck on AOL. I certainly had a lot of conversations on AOL, but I don't know that I ever actually met anybody. But I was also like 13 or 14 years old when I was mm -hmm. doing this. Later on, then you had um, we started talking during the break. There was a website, Talk City, and Talk City was like it was an IRC. Uh, network, but it was primarily like a web-based interface. Most of the users were going on there either with their web browsers or it was built into the web TV system. Some of you might remember that. Um, the, the, I don't think they. Use, I don't think web TV like exists anymore. Probably but not. It, yeah. it was. It was very popular for a period of time with people who were sort of like too poor, too dumb to get a computer, and uh, they would use this thing on their on their television sets. And so, uh, Talk City was one of the, like the featured things for web TV that you go chat with people on your television set. And so. Um, there were a lot of a lot of people and women in um, no shortage of women on Talk City, and we had like a, a Long Island chat room that uh, I uh, I I did I did I don't know if I want to say I did pretty well because these women were disasters, but I did have sex with them. <laughs> well, I guess if you're just looking for a hookup, that's what counts, right? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 basically what I was like. I had one; it was terrible. She had like she had photos up, and they were like they had to be more than ten years old. The photos, like oh, wow. sure, before yeah. she had a bunch of kids by different dads, right. and she she invites me to come to her house, and and I don't know my way around the city at this point, right? And so uh, she's like, yeah, just get on a train to uh, Penn Station, then get in a cab and tell 
town to take you to 8th and D. And I don't know where 8th and D is. I'm just getting in a cab and saying, take me to this place, oh, right? No. <laughs> and 8th and D is in a place known as Alphabet City. And I end up in a housing project. And oh, my. Oh, yeah. It was a disaster. She was a white woman, but she lived in a projects. And like, as I get out of this cab, I'm, I'm like 16 years old, maybe, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and I walk past this, uh, this group of guys who uh, knows that I'm not from the neighborhood, shall yep. we say. You know, they, they kind of like talk some smack to me as I'm walking up. And I end up going up this elevator. The the, the building stinks of urine. And I Ugh. get in there and there's uh. bugs in the apartment. And I, oh, no. I like meet this woman. and Oh, God, it was Goodbye. a disaster. <laughs> you didn't turn around, though. I huh? screwed her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Jesse in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Jesse. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. You're on the air. I have a question for you. You know, we're talking about politicians, self-serving interests. And, well, we were talking about internet dating, but you're welcome to talk about politicians. They're uh, much less yeah, interesting. Yeah, we were talking about Trump and all them guys. Well, if you guys look into this, just before John Kerry sold the Heinz Company to Buffett, he struck a deal with Mexico over certain tomato tomato farms and, and uh, deals with them over that, releasing a whole lot of tomatoes into the U.S. really cheaply, and that was that was really suspicious. I never heard anything about it. I read a story once about, oh, almost a year ago about this, but... I saw that movie. Everything. It was like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or something. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Fried Green Tomatoes? I, I can't happen. remember. They're going to come get them. <laughs> so I don't but really understand what you're saying. So uh, the, they sold Heinz, but there was some sort of deal about getting imported tomatoes that you're concerned with? Yeah, just... Yeah, just before he sold to Warren Buffett and sold the company, months before, I know at least several weeks before, he had struck a deal. And I believe this is just self-interest that he started just to sell his company for more money to Warren Buffett by uh, decreasing red tape, getting tomatoes from Mexico to the United States now. I was just kind of curious. Well, that's usually what motivates a politician, right, is their own pockets and not the good of uh, of the people. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, bringing in more food into the United States is a fine idea. I mean, opening, uh, lowering trade barriers, removing tariffs, uh, I think more of that should happen. Obviously, it was only done in this case to super serve one particular politician. Absolutely. Right, uh, but because we could, we could, we could have you know bring in more tomatoes, but we've got to keep them dang bananas and oranges out of here because they're dangerous. <laughs> Jesse, yeah. thanks for your call tonight. Yeah, man. Anything before, else you want to share? Okay. Oh no, that was that was pretty much it. And uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you listening out there to KVLI in California. Uh, our toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty free. Yeah, let's lo- let's you know open it up to free trade. How about that? Let's just try some free trade. Can we do that for? Sure. Oh no, we've got free trade agreements all over the place, and they're just no. fantastic, right? You know, those aren't free <laughs> trade. They're like thousands of pages long, and yeah. I'm like, I think a free trade agreement would consist of like. No restrictions on trade. It would be really short. Right, it would be really tra- easy to understand. You yeah. don't even have to have anything written down. Just take all the existing free trade agreements and set them on fire. And <laughs> you you'll actually have real free trade after that. But yeah, if you really must have something written down, one sentence uh, would suffice. Just a few words uh, is that there shall be no tariffs, import or export or whatever. No taxes, no tariffs, no restrictions. You should be able to do business with whoever you choose around the world sure. as long as they are willing to do business with you. I mean, that seems so crazy, right? <laughs> Radical, crazy, off-the-wall things we well, talk about on this program. And in the case of Tinder, you're trading one thing for another. So there, there's a free trade right there. And, you know, you <laughs> should be... There's another thing you should be able to trade in is sex, which, of course, you wouldn't be allowed to do on a system like Tinder, but that is something that should be legal, that you should be legally able to buy or sell sexual services. Yeah, when you're swiping left and right, there should be a, a price tag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, do you want to pay $200 for this one or $100 for this one? Well, no, it's a little larger. Oh, right? man. <laughs> Would give people some interesting feedback for the first time, that's for sure. Okay, all right. So if you want to tell us about your Tinder experience, did you make the move from the online dating world of, uh, let's say, OkCupid or Match.com into the Tinder world, and what changed? I mean, are you only finding, like, cold people who just want to have sex with you and be done with it, or are there a bunch of people who are looking for a relationship on Tinder as well? It's just that they want to see if they're sexually compatible first. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. 
And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,156 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. And HowWar.com reports with the June 7th election deadlocked and no majority government possible, Turkey's election commission has proposed November 1st for its next vote. This is sooner than many expected, though it won't be finalized until they receive input from the various political parties involved. The deadline for forming a government is August 23rd. After that, the current ruling party, the Justice and Development Party, AKP, will either have to get approval for an election date or President Erdogan will have to form an election government with opposition parties to make the arrangements. The AKP tried to form coalition governments with both the People's Republican Party and the National Movement Party, though neither was willing. The National Movement Party had apparently offered to join under several conditions, including starting a new war against the PKK, which the AKP actually did, but they also wanted to strip Kurds and other minorities of their citizenship and demanded the AKP tackle corruption. It is generally believed the corruption call was the biggest problem for them. The PKK war is looming large in the next election, though initial predictions that it would damage support for the People's Democratic Party have not so far panned out, and rather the pro-Kurdish leftist party is said to be polling slightly higher than they did in June. The risk of another vote without a winner is looming large and sending investors out of the Turkish lira, which has fallen some 8% in recent days. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Oklahoma State Senator Rick Brinkley resigned Thursday after pleading guilty to the charge he defrauded the Better Business Bureau of $1.83 million. Brinkley, who represents Oklahoma's 34th district, which includes Tulsa, issued a statement announcing his resignation, saying, Due to personal reasons, I hereby irrevocably resign my office as state senator for District 34, effective immediately. Those personal reasons likely included six charges related to a scheme in which he admitted he 
embezzled money from the Better Business Bureau, where he worked. The scheme took place between 2005 and 2015. Court documents indicate Brinkley stole $1.83 million from the Better Business Bureau for his personal benefit. U.S. Attorney Danny Williams Sr. said the senator stole the money to fund a gambling habit. Brinkley pled guilty to five counts of wire fraud and one count of tax evasion. As part of the plea deal, Brinkley agreed to pay back $1.83 million to the Better Business Bureau and $165,625 to the Internal Revenue Service. U.S. District Judge Claire Egan scheduled his sentencing for November 20th. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports that New York City created a task force on Thursday to examine how it can rein in topless women in costumed cartoon and superhero characters who officials believe are aggressively soliciting tips for posing for tourist pictures in Times Square. Convened by the mayor and co-chaired by the New York City Police Commissioner William Bratton and Planning Commissioner Carl Weisbrod, the task force will report its findings by October 1st. Times Square, with its Broadway theaters, huge video billboards, hawkers, and tourists, has cleaned up its image in the past 20 years and turned itself into a hub for media and banking. That's a far cry from the 1970s when the city was practically broke and Times Square was synonymous with crime, peep shows, prostitution, and drugs. While the arrival of the topless woman painted red, white, and blue seeking tips is relatively new. Costumed characters such as Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Goofy, Iron Man, Thor, and Betty Boop have sidled up to tourists in Times Square for years for pictures and a quick buck. A Reuters witness could not find any painted topless women walking in the area on Thursday following a media storm over reports they were behaving aggressively. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Thousands took to the streets to protest the NYPD's Stop and Kiss program. New Yorkers who have been stopped often say the encounters feel extremely intrusive. Going through my pockets, throwing my stuff on the ground, kissing me on my neck and face. They push me up against the wall and start nibbling on my ear. Joining us now is legal analyst Susan Hughes and Mark Brennan, a former police officer who has defended the Stop and Kiss program. Look, it's one thing to kiss someone who you think might commit a crime, but these officers are just kissing people left and right with no probable cause. If you've got nothing to hide, then it's not a problem. They just stop, ask where you're going, give you a gentle kiss or two, and let you go. Mark, there have been examples, public examples, where these procedures have just gone too far. Let's take a look at a disturbing cell phone video that's been making the rounds on the internet. Stop! Put your hands on your head. Oh, come on, man. They just kissed me two blocks ago. Come on, man. I didn't do Shut anything. Shut the f up and let me kiss you. Look, the cops can either kiss people now before there's violence, or they can be kissing a bunch of dead bodies at a crime scene. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Cantwell. And that's Chris Cantwell from ChristopherCantwell.com. We'll talk more about, uh, I don't know, some fresh writings over at ChristopherCantwell.com because you've always got something interesting you're talking about over at ChristopherCantwell.com. Stir in the pot. Uh, of course, uh, Chris is also going to be speaking at the upcoming Keenvention. We'll tell you more about that later, too. But what we've been talking about, Danica, you brought in a story from Vanity Fair focusing on the question of whether or not Tinder, this extremely popular, you can't call it a dating app, hookup app. Yeah, that's more appropriate. Uh, is killing the dating world. Is that actually happening? We talked last week about how these apps are killing definitely, it seems like, the, uh, the clubs of the world. UK clubs down 50%, meaning closing their doors. 50% of them have closed their doors over the last decade as the rise of dating apps and hookup apps has uh, proliferated. I've, mm-hmm. I've got a... I, did, was there an article or something on that that you could point me to later? Because I want to look at this. I've got to say, there's got to be something else going on there, right? Uh, I mean, I never understood the idea of like hooking up with people in clubs to begin with, right? I mean, you've just got like this loud music and I mean, you can't either, talk to people. People did it, right? I mean, that was a relatively common thing. Yeah, I mean, people definitely did it, and I, I mean, I know a lot of people who did it, right? And they'd be yeah, like, "Oh, sure, we went I to the club." And, yeah, you know, I know okay. plenty of people that did it. But like, 
I never understood that, right? I guess it's because I don't, I don't dance. Either. I don't I don't dance, so it doesn't make sense to me. But I guess if you dance and people are like, oh, I don't yeah, mind dancing. Bumping I mean, uglies here, we might as well take our clothes off and go do it somewhere else. I guess. I mean, I don't mind dancing, but at the same time, it doesn't seem like a productive way to meet people, you know? Yeah, my thing, I've, I've got to be able to talk to a woman, right. you know? So if I'm in some club, and I mean, like, I did some of the, like, the rave thing, you know, and, and you know, did taking K and ecstasy and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. And that was kind of cool. You know, <laughs> but, you know, you find, but it, it would be a thing that like, I'd have to go find, I, I, I wasn't hooking up on dance floors, right? Like I'd have to get That's them tacky. off to some area where, there are where people I can who talk do that to somebody. And it's generally frowned upon. Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. <laughs> you know, you're at a dirty rave when someone's having sex on the floor at the rave. That's a bad <laughs> scene. It's just like, all right, you need, you need to go yeah. now. <laughs> That's pretty tacky. So, uh, but let's continue here with the story, sure. Danica, about Tinder, these hookup apps. Are they killing the dating world? Not just the club scene, but the dating world, period. Right. So we left off by talking about how in the 90s it was Craigslist and AOL chat rooms that people were meeting and getting together. Um, I also used MySpace in the early 2000s. I went on a couple of days using MySpace. But then Match.com and Kiss.com started coming in. And it, when online dating first started taking off, people got kind of shamed over it. I I noticed that a lot. Really? Do, I mean, do, have yeah, it was it was mocked. Like I um yeah, people made fun of me. Yeah, for not like, being able to meet someone the normal way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I go tell my friends like, oh, I hooked up with this chick from you know this personal site or whatever, and they'd be like, why are you on online dating, dude? Why don't you go to hook up? Blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yeah, I'm why like, don't you go to a bar. Like, or what do I care? What do I care where I met this woman? Right? right. Like, the, like it's it's not as cool because I did it on a personal's website, but it's totally awesome if I meet her when she's a drunk falling down mess in a bar. <laughs> like, this is all of a sudden. Sure, like a really yeah. great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's probably true. Like I can I guess I can recall vaguely it sort of in the very early days being looked at as, oh look, the geeks can finally meet yeah. and go and, and date. Right. And and I and I, you know, look, I've certainly, you know, uh got some geek in me, right? And I put some geek in some other people. But <laughs> but you know, it was definitely not it was not entirely about that. I mean, especially when you have like um like you mentioned MySpace, and I was definitely I was on MySpace like crazy. Like I had like ten thousand MySpace friends, hmm. and they were all like almost all local single women who drank and smoked because I I was like a club promoter, right? I, hmm. I I took this like bartending school thing, and they guarantee you a job afterwards, which is really like you can bartend at this place for free <laughs> for oh, as wow, long as deal. yeah, and you know you work for tips or whatever, but you you in order to gain the privilege of being able to tend this bar, mm -hmm. you have to get people to come in. Right, so they'll give you passes or whatever. Oh, Sierra drinks. promoter, got it. And so I, I became this like MySpace like club promoter, and I, and I bought the friend adder app. And hmm. MySpace used to give you this way that you could like search for you know friends by like a lot of criteria, right? Like Facebook, you can't say I'm looking for single women in this given geographic area who right. drink, right? Right. MySpace, you could. MySpace, you could do that. And I had hmm. the friend adder app that would just automatically add Facebook friends, nice. all, uh, MySpace friends all day. And so I had uh, I had some good success with MySpace. And that was when it started to go away from okay, we're just on a dating site to we're on a social networking site. And I think right. that took some of the stigma away from it because if yeah, you're on, absolutely. Like, and then Facebook started taking off and people became more comfortable with using Facebook. So from online dating, now we've gone to mobile dating. Mobile dating has gone about has gone mainstream about five years ago. And by 2012, it's it's been overtaking online dating. Wow. In February, one study reported that there are nearly 100 million people, about 50 million on Tinder alone, using Jeez. their phones as some sort of all day, every day handheld singles club. Or you could find a sex partner as easily as you could just look for a flight to Florida. Now, dating apps are the free market uh, economy when it comes to sex. The innovation of Tinder is the swipe, the flick of a finger on, fl yeah, sorry, the flick of a finger on a picture. No more elaborate profiles necessary, and no more fear of rejections. Users only know when they've been approved, never when they've been discarded. Okay, Cupid soon adopted the you function. Know, before you go on, it's it makes sense, right? Like right. that's that's how people get attracted to one another, and that's what people would mostly look at with online profiles. So it makes sense to take the photos, put them front and center, sure. and base an app around that. But from what I understand, Tinder doesn't have anything else, right? Like, is there a profile on Tinder? Not really. You get a, you get a very brief summary. Uh huh. And I found this extraordinarily frustrating. I I signed up for Tinder uh, when I was back in New York. Yeah. Uh, and so we had mentioned during one of the breaks, I said, I didn't have much luck with Tinder. And they're like, you're in Keene. Of course not. But, <laughs> That's what I but said. <laughs> back in, back in New York, I, I had, I had originally signed up for it and, um, 
you know, look, I am uh, – I I'd like to think of myself as a good looking guy, but I You've lost to, a lot of weight. You're looking good. I thank you say. very much. And I and this is your it's worth pointing out that yes, when I started on Tinder, I that was before I lost the weight. I was mm -hmm. like two hundred and sixty pounds and, and none of it flattering. And so mm. I uh I'm I'm I've been a guy traditionally who has to get a, at a woman's ears and not so much her eyes. Sure. And so <laughs> um <clears throat> Uh, so Tinder didn't really work out for me, but you started to say that uh, OK Cupid as well had sort of adopted this thing, right? Right, that's correct. They have a similar mechanism in their app, but they also have the profiles. Yeah, they have the profiles, right. and they have adopted the similar, you know, swiping kind of mechanism. Yeah, going so on. you have that swiping mechanism where you're looking at the photo and you're swiping left yep. for rejection and right for uh, to to accept, and you know, on on uh, OK Cupid they call it quick match. Yeah, and I do this. I well. I'm, I actually like I'm seeing somebody now, but until pretty recently, I would do this pretty regularly that I just go and I do this swipe back and forth. And then if you if you match with somebody on OkCupid, then they, you get a notification, right? Um, if you're like an A-list member, if you have a premium account with OkCupid, mm -hmm. they'll notify you every time someone likes you. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't uh, get that generally unless uh, uh, unless it's a mutual match on OkCupid. Right, so, so the person would have to like you and then you, not knowing that, would also have to like that person. Presuming you're in the same area, there's a good chance that that could. Have, there's a chance that that could happen. Yeah. And I then they will notify both parties of the. That exactly, you get a notification on your phone. Or so, OK Cupid has a premium account. Do you know by a chance how much that usually goes for? I forget how much I used to have it. I bet I, it's I, affordable. I mean, yeah, okay it's, Cupid, I think it's like ten dollars a month or something. It's not okay, bad. Okay, does Tinder have a premium account? I don't. I don't hmm. think so. Um, I don't know if they do or not. I, I didn't use it for that long. Like, okay, Cupid, I had I had the premium account and I only canceled it. Like they had this thing um that they anybody who used Firefox went to their website, got like this notification asking them to use a different browser because one of the Firefox developers like donated to like a, a thing against gay marriage. What? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm not funding your political agenda. Get out of here. And I and I and I asked for a refund. Um, and oh, wow. I and I got my premium account refunded because of that. But I used to before that happened. I I had the premium account. You get some you get some good features with that. Like you can see, um, uh, uh, what was it? You can go like you can well, on OK Cupid. You can see who's visited your profile. Yeah. So like if you're going and visiting the same girl's profile over and over again, you can look like a creepy stalker. Yeah, yeah. And so they give you like uh, in, they call it a list as the premium account, and you can. Um, and you could go in invisible so that you, they, you don't see when they're going to your, you know, <laughs> um, you can see when people like you, that sort of thing. They, they get some nice features with it. Yeah, I, I always liked the OkCupid okay site because it was free and they never, you know, yeah, there was the options, but you could still get pretty good usage out of the site just from the free I account. just wondered if it was better to pray, pay for something and use it instead of using something free and get spammed with something bad. Well, we'll come back. You can discuss this. Share it with us. Uh, your thoughts, 855 450 free Get the stinky dog away from me. Petey stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. Bad breath and bad gas. Chew himself raw. Sticky, gooey, smelly. She scratched incessantly. At least $5,000 in vet bill. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Adding Dynavite to their diet has every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. She has gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Oh. dot com. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to IDStronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet sleeves or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. 
you'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit IDStronghold.com today. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here to share your online dating experience. Is Tinder now killing online dating? You know, first of all, online dating years ago killed off the offline dating world as far as, you know, who the hell uses the old on offline dating services. We talked about this a little while back that you know they had the um, the services you'd go into and they'd videotape you on like a VHS tape and you'd sit down in a chair and talk about yourself to this that camera. That sounds like a really awful MTV show. Doesn't it? It sounds really awkward, but that's what some people would do, you know, back in the 80s and the early 90s to try to meet people. I and I don't think it's necessarily killed, you know, older ways of meeting people that's just opened up the market a bit. I mean, people still hook up with people at bars and, you know, maybe they will eventually turn into a marital partner or a longtime partner. Who knows? But people are still using older ways of dating and meeting people. Well, maybe it hasn't been uh, killed off completely, but I mean, there's no doubt there's been a just a sea change sure, in, absolutely. Uh, in the difference. I mean, we had talked about earlier the recollection that in the day back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, people who were doing online dating were made fun of. But now those same people who are probably poking fun, so long as they're not in some, you know, long term relationship are likely the owners of an online dating profile yeah. at this point. Yeah, I think that now it would be like, what, you don't you haven't signed up for one of these services yet? Yeah. What's wrong with you? You know, unless you're already married or something. Exactly. So we are uh, in the midst of this, but you're welcome to join in the, the discussion here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM, so feel free to connect with us that way. Danica, the story is coming from Vanity Fair, and the question is about these new sort of hookup apps like Tinder or Grindr. Uh, are these killing online dating? Go ahead. Yeah. So and this is a, another question that's going to make Chris just double over in laughter and come back with an argument. Is this good for women? Since the emergence of flappers and moderns in the 1920s, the debate of what is lost and gained from women in casual sex has been raging and is raging still, especially among women. Some, like in the Atlantic writer Hannah Rosen, are seeing hookup culture as a boon. The hookup culture is bound with everything that's fabulous about being a young woman in 2012. Freedom, confidence... But others lament the way the extreme casualness of sex in the age of tenure leaves many women feeling devalued. 
it's rare for a woman of our generation to meet a man who treats her like a priority instead of an option. And I'm just thinking, well, what about men, too? Well, I, I would say I think hookup culture is um, more... I think it benefits men more than women, frankly. I, I, I don't... Um, I, I don't I don't know that it's a completely ridiculous question because I mean this is the conundrum that you have with these feminists right that they're like men view women as sexual objects and then they're like we want to act like sexual objects right and so <laughs> and not this, be viewed as one right exactly they're like they want to stand out there with no clothes on and say still not asking for it right and so this is this ridiculous stuff that you have coming from the from the feminist crowd but I think it's I think it's a worthwhile question to ask, right? Is it is it a good thing that you know you're um, sort of putting yourself on this you know in a lineup waiting for guys to decide if they want to have sex with you or not or swipe mm -hmm. right or swipe left, you know? Sure. And is that you know is that in uh, women's interest, right? Is it more is it more objectifying? It them I think and, the question's ridiculous. I mean, it's in different people's interests, right? So not every woman, not every man is the same. So for sure. some for some women who are more sexually driven than others, and the same thing for some men who are more sexually driven than others, then this is a total boon. This is a way to have more sex more often, right? But for people who are more interested in developing a relationship and they want to have sex with people that they're connected with more so than just a one-night stand, then maybe it's not so good for them. I, I think that really is a question about an individual and, and their preferences. Well, of I course, totally everything is a question about individuals, but individuals comprise groups, and, they're, they're, and groups are worth identifying, right? And this is this, like, libertarian thing that we've always got to boil everything down to the individual, as, as if identifying groups is somehow inherently anti-individualistic, right? Well, there's nothing wrong with identifying a group, but a, a group as large as women is obviously not going to be an accurate statement in general, because there are, there's a variety of people within that. Oh, of course I can say general statements about women. I can say women have uh, larger breasts than men in general, right? In general, I can say, general. I can say all women have vaginas, right? So I can yep. say things about groups of people. Sure. I can say women have higher uh, concentrations of estrogen than men. That's all true. And Very these true. are these but are if things. we're talking now, about preferences, then things get different. But right? we, we, things are going to be different, and there's going to be a, a greater variance, of course. But we can still identify like patterns amongst genders, right? Like I could say, you know, men are 90 plus percent of the prison population because they are more prone to crime than women. Right? Yeah, That's an that accurate statement, I think. Like, testosterone, the same hormone that makes me want to have sex with women, makes me want to bash men's skulls open. So, <laughs> you know, so women have hormones that have uh, e effects on their preferences, right? Sure. Don't Absolutely, they? Yeah. I mean, women are women are generally tend to ap be more apt towards certain things than men. And I think those, those, are, those are patterns that are worth identifying. And so if... Um, <clears throat> I do think that there's a certain like uh, element of society, if you will, that is trying to encourage women to um, view sex more casually. Casually, and there's ups and downs to that. Certainly, I enjoy the company of promiscuous women. I sure uh -huh. do. Right. I, I. There's a part of me that wants to encourage that, but at the same time, I don't think that it's in women's best interest to sleep around and you know get sort of like you know, passed around like a blunt at a party. I mean, is that it's in not... anyone's best interest? I mean, that is going to result in, it seems like, more sexually transmitted diseases, sure. number one. It's certainly going to result in more pregnancies, number yeah. two. Yeah, and it's going to result in really uh, bad outcomes in terms of pregnancies, right? So we're mm -hmm. going to have an increase in abortions, which is a thing that I think is completely horrific. We're going to have, um, you know, some really irresponsible breeding going on, which is going to... Um, you know, degrade the, the the value of your gene pool in general. Um, you know, now I, you're quoting idiocracy. <laughs> well, I, it's I'm watching it happen, right? I mean, right. that, that yeah. was scary. The, you know, one of the scariest documentaries I ever watched. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, but at the same time, this is what people want. This is what a lot of people want. They want to be able to get hooked up with somebody else for just the uh, you know the satisfaction of the sex. Right, and so that's just like an idiocracy that they're going to Starbucks for hand jobs. I mean, this is like a problem. You know, it's people are not thinking this through. You know, people are not thinking about like okay, you know, sex, families, you know, babies, these sorts of things. They're mm -hmm. not thinking these things through. They're just like, oh, I have a, I have a drive to go, you know, uh, insert into something, and then I'm going to go do it, and and they're going to have all these terribly deleterious effects because they're not thinking it through and i think it's really destructive how long has the tinder app been around i know i've been hearing about it for a few years uh, i suspect it's been around a little longer probably a few years i i remember people talking about it probably back in 2013 2012 i and, think and didn't you say earlier there are now 50 million americans that are using that app yeah it's That's estimated incredible. that there's about 50 million t on tinder alone like there's That's about 100 true. million people using mobile dating and 50 wow. million on tinder alone supposedly 
Dr. David Buss, a professor of psychology at the University of Texas at Austin, specializes in the evolution of human sexuality. He says apps like Tinder and OkCupid give people the impression that there are thousands or millions of potential mates out there. One dimension of this... There are definitely thousands of potential mates out there. Yeah, I don't don't know if millions is uh, accurate for the average person, but I would say that each person probably has thousands of potential mates. Probably where you're at, too. Where you're at, fewer than probably thousands. One dimension of this is the impact it has on men's psychology. When there is a surplus of women or perceived surplus of women, the whole mating system tends to shift towards short-term dating. Marriages become unstable. Divorces increase. Men don't have to commit, so they pursue a short-term meeting strategy. Men are making that shift, and women are forced to go along with it in order to meet it all. And I think that's really important to point out. I mean, it, it and, and this has certainly happened with me that I'm like 34 years old now, and I'm like, uh, you know, I've been doing really irresponsible sexual things my entire life because that's exactly what it is. Well, let's talk about that a little bit further. I think it deserves more uh, explanation. Yeah. 855 450 free if you want to weigh in here on Free Talk Live. KDArmor.com is your one stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Katie offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level four. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's C A T I Armor.com. Come and take it. We, the people, grow cotton, wheat fabric. Engrave Inc. embeds strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carding to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas 
of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us toll-free here, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Regal Cinemas apparently now uh, with a new bag-searching policy. Another reason to not go to the movies to see whatever it is that you want to see. Uh, we can talk more about that coming up here since it kind of ties in with this dating subject that we've had throughout the show tonight. Yeah, dating, touching bags. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly right. Uh, <laughs> you can also join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And as long as you touch the bags with consent, you're okay in my book. <laughs> so, Depends on what are you sneaking in the bags? Yeah. Now, there's the thing. <laughs> uh, rummage around. Well, when I'm not, I'm not going to let them personally. I, I'm not interested in going to Regal uh, Cinemas after this announcement. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, but, Danica, we're still talking about this question, or there's several questions surrounding the movement of people towards. Uh, hookup apps the hookup culture yeah. and that i think is interesting i i don't personally understand it but i guess i can see why people are into it uh we'll continue with it here in a moment i also want to let you know about bitcoinist.net which is the prime online destination for information about bitcoin and the digital currency industry over at bitcoinist.net they have integrated a community forum breaking bitcoin and digital currency news plus fintech and blockchain tech news as well Bitcoinist has sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies from beginners to experts. So go to Bitcoinist.net. That again is Bitcoinist.net. Like ist, like Bitcoin IST? You are correct. Okay. Bitcoinist.net. So I almost, thought, I almost thought you said like Bitcoin us or something. Thank you for the for asking for the clarification. Maybe I should spell it out uh, each time. Bitcoinist n i s t uh, dot net. So Danica, the question you were we were discussing in the last segment is: Is this good for women? Meaning it, essentially, yeah. The the hookup app, the rise of the hookup app, and the argument was being made that essentially that it is not good for uh, for women as far as... Essentially, if he, the argument is that if there's a surplus of women or a perceived surplus, then the whole mating system tends to shift towards short term. You know, no commitment needed or anything. And when men make that shift, that women are kind of forced to go with that in order if they want to get any sex at all. But it short term mating strategies do seem to work for a lot of women too. I mean, you know, young women that are trying to focus on their education and trying to launch careers. I mean, not a lot of them want committed relationships either. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Armstrong, a professor of sociology at the University of Michigan, says, for young women, the problem in navigating sexuality and relationships is still gender inequality. Young women complain that young men still have the power to decide when something is going to be serious and when something is not. They can say, she's girl for material, she's hookup material. There is still a pervasive double standard. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, I, I think that the premise that they're working on is is a good point, that they're saying, okay, you're creating in men this this perception of limitless dating opportunities a or mating market, opportunities, if you will. right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. so you're creating this perception. And, that, and that's an important thing to understand on a sociobiological level, okay? Um, you know, human beings, the reason that we're the undisputed ruling species of this planet is because we are more capable of adapting than other species, okay? Mm. And men, uh, you know, physically speaking, men are capable of impregnating a near infinite number of women, whereas, you know, women have a, a limited number of children that they can deliver, right? right. They, you've right. got a limited number of eggs, you're going to go into menopause at some point, you, you know, long gestation periods, yada, yada, yada. But men, uh, you know, if you have a farm and you have like cows on it, right, you you only need to have one, one bull, bull, right, because right. the bull can go up and knock out as many cows as you want. And so this is important for human society because, of course, you know, we have like a war or something like that, right? So, you know, World War II, Germany and the Soviet Union beat the, the hell out of each other. And then, uh, but sure enough, like the, the population numbers are back to normal by, by the next generation because, 
the men who are left over can impregnate all of the women of the society. Mm-hmm. So this, but that's that does like an important like psychological thing that a lot of us might not even be aware of. That like if you're seeing this near, you, if you have this perception of like an infinite number of mating opportunities, that you will shift to a short term mating strategy. That you'll be like, okay, well, you know, it seems to me that it, I have this obligation to go knock up all the women of this society in order because to because of uh, because of what you're you're saying that's happening because uh, people have the instinct to do it. Yes, but you're saying that they have the instinct to knock up women i think they, they're just trying to hook up you know they're just trying to get sex they're not necessarily worried about recreate but recreating. that's what's that's, driving that's, it that's a logical decision that you're right. talking about and i'm not right. talking about a logical decision i'm talking about like epigenetics we're talking about like your your sex drive is going to be put through the roof in in order to to you know pursue this goal okay and so this, a lot of we are driven by what's going on between our legs a lot more than we're been well, then you get between our for. ears yeah. yeah so like human beings are just completely driven by their their reproductive instincts and nobody even thinks about it most of the time but if you bother to think about it you realize that like you know what's the, what's the say um everything is about sex except for sex sex is about power <laughs> so like this is really everything that we're trying to do in this world is trying to like attract a mate right we're trying to you know uh, uh, be interesting and well liked and have money and all of this stuff and a lot of that is because we want uh on a on an instinctual level we want to attract a mate to spread our dna and that sort of thing it's important to you know, sort of take these things into consideration. So if you're having this perception where there's a near infinite number of, you know, mating opportunities, yeah, you're going to be instinctually driven towards a short-term mating strategy because you're not going to, you know, settle down with one woman. You've got to, you're going to go up and, you know, recreate the next generation. Which ultimately giving into those instincts isn't good for society, right? Because we want to bring logic in. We want to bring the idea of having a relationship with somebody because, you know, if you just knock somebody up and then you move on, that doesn't lead to good kids in the long run, right? Right. And of course, most of the sex that we're having is, you know, there's a layer of latex between us or, you know, pills and all this stuff is probably the vast majority of sex Mm. that's going on anyway or pulling out at the very least. But, um, you know, these are things that we are logically figuring out in order to deal with the negative repercussions of our irresponsible actions, right? That's what birth control is. And so, um, you know, and that has positive effects, obviously. I mean, I'm very glad that not every woman I've had sex with is has pregnant. You know, I'm very yeah. I'm very glad for that. Right. As uh, much as you, you know, want a child, as, you're still as glad much for as it. I would love if one or two of them, maybe, <laughs> but <laughs> it's certainly not every one of them, you know. But then again, if that was the case, maybe I'd be more responsible in where I stick my I don't know if I should say that on no, the radio. Probably not. So <laughs> when in doubt, leave it out, yeah. as they say. <laughs> when in doubt, leave it out. So um but I, I think it's I think it's an astute reference, you know, that yeah. you're you're creating this perception, and that is going to drive towards a, a short term mating strategy, which is not in the best interest of women. If we, you think of just state of nature, like if if a woman has sex and you know, take birth control out of the picture, it's not in the best interest of men either. I mean, I want to have somebody around to cook for me and you know do nice things. Well, like and that. it's and, and that's and that's very worth pointing out too, because I mean, I've I've long thought that you know it's just awesome to be able to get laid all of the time, right? And mm. so you know, I've been uh, up until very recently. I've been single for a very long time. Yeah. And I was just, you know, sort of enjoying this, like, okay, you know, um, um, F them and leave them sort of thing. Okay. And so this was a lot of fun for a long period of time. And so I'm in my mid thirties and my sexual got? market value is declining. And now I'm like, okay, you know, let's, uh, let's find somebody to settle down with. And I'm like, Oh, this is not as easy as it was when I was in my twenties. Right. Well, that right. makes perfect sense because a lot of people when they're younger really do want to hook up. They want to see as many people as they possibly can. And when they get older and they want to, maybe think about starting a family or being with someone for the rest of their lives, they tend to slow down a bit. I mean, it sounds like that's a natural evolution. I, I think it's a nat- it's a natural thing, but at the same time, it has it has detrimental effects, right? If I had settled down with any number of the women that I hooked up in my twenties, you know, I, I think that my life would probably be in a better place, right? If I had settled down earlier and not been like drinking and whoring into my mid thirties, like <laughs> I probably would have avoided a lot of like negative experiences, so the, right? So the question is. Is the Tinder app and the apps like it, are they encouraging more of the behavior that Chris is saying was detrimental? I, I think that they are encouraging For it longer. more, but I but I don't think that they are the, the cause of it, right? No, I mean, certainly this not. Is, this is the decline of human society, and it's just Tinder is just marketing to that decline. Hmm. You know, and 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 I think that, and, and it's certainly not killing online dating, which, which I thought was like the the premise of this. I mean, you've still got, I mean, OK Cupid has is online dating, right? Yeah. right? And so all OK Cupid did was like, wow, people are really using the mobile a lot. I guess we better make an app. 
right? Match.com has an app. eHarmony probably has an app. Like all of the online dating sites, if they want to survive in the marketplace, are going to evolve and put an app on. Yeah, it's all on the phones now. You know. We've got time for you. If you want to join this conversation, certainly you may do so. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Your thoughts on the uh, move towards less informative dating apps or hookup apps, if you will. Uh, This is Free Talk Live. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates? Or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News & World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country? Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, Radical Agenda's Chris Cantwell, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. Whether you want to talk about dating here in 2015 as compared to a decade or two ago, 
Now, are people even willing to date anymore with the advent of apps like Tinder that are just basically turning people into a big meat market? But some people love this. This is what people want. Chris Campbell pointed out they're just marketing to what people are desiring, which is uh, hookups with no strings attached in a lot of cases. Uh, we'll continue here that discussion. You're welcome to join us at 855-450-FREE. Or, of course, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Well, whatever happens in the dating world, there's still a need for health care. In fact, there's a movement in healthcare today. It's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their health care. People like you and I who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that's sweeping the nation, and you ought to be a part of it. Liberty Health Share is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty Health Share is a healthcare sharing organization full of people who are sharing the cost of healthcare in an easy, efficient way. You can choose your own doctor, choose your own hospital, and live out your values in healthcare. Join the movement and let's change healthcare for good. Go to libertyhealthshare.org or call them toll free at 855 58 Liberty. That's libertyhealthshare.org, 855 58 Liberty. That's a good idea because if you're on Tinder, you might need some antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> Let's you go just might. to Doug. He's in Minnesota on the amp lines. Hello, Doug. You're on with Ian Danica and Cantwell. Hey, it's surreal. I mean, Doug. I mean, surreal. I mean, oh. Okay. I can't keep it up anymore. Well, welcome to the show. Longtime listeners will recognize the moniker Surreal uh, as someone who, a character that you created, Doug, to call the show and sort of give guys uh, dating tips and pickup tips as a sort of a oh. successful pickup artist. That's right. That's right. And I was just thinking, this I was calling in as Surreal back when Gardner Goldsmith was a regular host. So it's been seven years when I, I was in the community, the PUA pickup artist community, and wow. I've since, you know, uh, finished. I've won. I've won the game. So I have a girlfriend who I've had for five years now, and I'm very happy. So. Oh, that's nice. I, well, once well, you've met her, she's come to Fort Fest once. Uh, but that was my reason for being in the pickup artist community is to learn how to talk to girls so that I can have a long-term relationship. All right, so, so Doug, t I mean, I know you have somewhere you're going with this. Just curious, though, about your uh, five-year-long relationship. Did you meet her in the club, which is where Surreal used to always spend his time? I met her in the club, you the did. health club. Oh. oh. Different kind of club. And you know the first thing I did? I no. read her palm. You read her palm. What does that yes. mean? It's a it's a good excuse for some physical contact, I suppose, and maybe you could come up with like some interesting thing to say. But uh, I, I mean, a tall, I, dark, handsome stranger. <laughs> yeah, how did that go? I, Tell I, me. Tell I me predict about. that you'll be in my bed this evening. Huh. No, that's like stupid. That's stupid. But the palm reading and the um, any sort of cold reading is a technique you use to meet people and break the ice. It's called chick crack because they <laughs> love it. They just are involved by any concept that you can predict their personality. And it's all bunk and BS. And then I, I, am, I, I finish the whole fun palm read as, and you see this line here? That's your dork line. I can't believe you're falling for this. And then they laugh and we realize it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually pretty sweet. And then, and then you set up a date with her, huh? Very nice. The most successful way to meet women is to do the easiest little goofy things and that's what i was trying to help guys with and it demystified the scary dating thing for me by play, making it a game and the, the women are playing the game they're putting on the makeup they're tossing their hair around they're trying to put on high heels and push up rods yep. so and they're looking for fun and so how to teach men how to be fun was what i learned yeah, no, what I found works really well with trying to pick up women is to, like, walk up to them in the bar and start having a, a discussion with them about economics. <laughs> it's really been working yeah. out swell for me. Tried and tried. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, but, but now what? I was gonna make, Doug? Yeah, well, uh, you know, my five-year relationship is fantastic, and it's uh, been the greatest thing ever, and uh, we're totally in love, and so, you know— 
that's good. So but I, okay, I, I, but what what encouraged you to call tonight besides uh, an update on your love life? I mean, what what is uh, what do you think, or what would Sir Real have to yeah. say about uh, the proliferation of these hookup apps? Well, you know, back when I was in the community, the only app we had was uh, texting, and there was a whole text game that you would try to work and what to say and a text and how long to wait and all this stuff. Today, I can't believe all the apps out there. And I'm just, I'm just sort of thinking a lot. I wonder how the PUA community has changed with all these apps and online dating. I know it's out there still. I'm semi in touch with some friends or instructors and some guys who are following various artists and stuff. Um, and it's kind of, I wonder if they, if they use these at all. Because I, I guess my perspective is that I wasn't in it for hookups and one night stands. Now, those might have happened along the way of me becoming a, a less nervous, scared guy, you know. But my goal was to long-term relationship with a hottie who is interesting and funny and intelligent. You know, that's what every guy's dream, I would think, is. Well, I don't think every guy's so, dream is a long-term relationship. I mean, uh, you know, a lot well, of guys are thinking like, hey, what am I going to do tomorrow and the next night? Uh you know, uh, not necessarily. I mean, that's what we started to get into before is that sort of the 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 trend has been towards short term mating strategies as opposed to the long term thing. But you saying that even when you're doing uh, all this uh, PUA pickup artist stuff, uh, that you are ultimately trying to uh, nail something down. Right. Let me suggest this. Maybe the short term strategy, the short term hookup stuff. I, my guess is those guys will stop doing that when they come across a high-quality woman they're attracted to and want to and like. Yeah. You know, I think part of it just makes the sampling system better with these apps and faster. Well, that's what I was suggesting earlier is that maybe this is a good thing from the perspective of, at the very least, if the first thing people are finding out about one another is if they're sexually compatible, you can you know, cross somebody right off the list, uh, if not. Uh, if so, maybe that could lead to uh, to a, a greater relationship. It certainly was true for the host of the Rebel uh, Rebel Love Show, Rob Mathias. He met uh, Anne, his Rebel mistress, on tw uh, Tinder, and they've been together ever since. So, I mean, certainly yeah, that I happens. That maybe this is, um, I, and yeah, I don't think that's one of the case. Sexual compatibility. Well, if you're with someone and having sex with them, you're finding out a lot more about them rather than just how good they are at bed. You're finding out if they're a conversationalist, if they're stupid, if they can if cook. They're players. <laughs> yep. You know, you, you gotta. How do you get to the bedroom before? You know, unless unless these Tinder apps are like, here's my number, meet me here, uh, uh, wear a blindfold, and let's do it. I don't that's, know if that's the way they which, are. I mean, without the blindfold, I'm pretty sure that describes the Tinder app. It, you know, literally is just hooking people up for sex. That's my sure. understanding. I mean, of it. It, 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 it hooks them up that they can have a conversation and you start yeah. messaging with each other. Now, yeah. your messages might be, uh, you know, uh, stand on the other side of this hole, or, or, <laughs> it, or it might consist of something a little bit more in depth, but certainly your profile, it doesn't give you any space to describe yourself. Okay. I got you. Well, my understanding is some of the, some of the uses of this, or certainly I've talked to Derek J. And, and he's used the uh, well. That's Grinder. The Grinder. And Grinder is a very. You know, are you going to suggest there's a difference that the people on Grinder are less interested in long-term relationships than the people it's, on it's Tinder? It's an all-male, you know, geographic but dating. It, all, it can be app. female too for. Not Grinder. I don't think Grinder is all oh, so only for only for men. Okay. And so you know, and and of course, you know, when uh, gay people are not in any danger of pregnancy, right? And so yeah, that's true. So there's no, there's a lot less incentive for a long term, you know, dating strategy there, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the it's it, when you have an all male dating app. I mean, I think there's going to be a great deal more of the, you know, hey, uh, thanks for the BJ. Um, I didn't get your name type of thing, right? You know? I don't know. I think Grindr could lead to relationships. It can. It, don't get, of course like, it like can. Like as much as Tinder could. Of, of course it can, but I'm just going to, I'm just pointing out that like, look, you know, um, heterosexual couples don't often meet up at like highway rest stops, right? I mean, <laughs> right. Not, right. They're not. Maybe like, it happens more often than you think. <laughs> perhaps, you know, but I, I think that that's a, a far more popular or an activity in the uh, in the ma male gay community than in uh, heterosexual groups. Doug, any final observations, thoughts you want to share? Go ahead. I still would like to do a surreal boot camp at Port Fest one of these days just to teach guys these little tricks that I learned that sure helped me become a happier person. And you, that would go over well at Port Fest. I know. I should do it.
Well, quit talking about it and then do it. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for the call tonight, Doug. I appreciate hearing from you, man. Uh, and congratulations on finding yourself a lady. All right, 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number, 855-450-3733. You know, whether or not Regal Cinemas is going to be searching your bags, taking somebody to a movie, that's kind of a terrible date. And now you've got even less of a reason to do it. They're going to be searching bags, or they already have started. Maybe you've encountered this. You want to tell us about it? Hour number three is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is cooling, down $5 to $1,158 per ounce. Silver is also down $0.15 cents to $15.48 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $232. US Roberts & Roberts has been helping people to buy metals for nearly 40 years. If you would like more information, give us a call. 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,156 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports with the June 7th election deadlocked and no majority government possible, Turkey's election commission has proposed November 1st for its next vote. This is sooner than many expected, though it won't be finalized until they receive input from the various political parties involved. The deadline for forming a government is August 23rd. After that, the current ruling party, the Justice and Development Party, AKP, will either have to get approval for an election date or President Erdogan will have to form an election government with opposition parties to make the arrangements. The AKP tried to form coalition governments with both the People's Republican Party and the National Movement Party, though neither was willing. The National Movement Party had apparently offered to join under several conditions, including starting a new war against the PKK, which the AKP actually did, but they also wanted to strip Kurds and other minorities of their citizenship and demanded the AKP tackle corruption. It is generally believed the corruption call was the biggest problem for them. The PKK war is looming large in the next election, though initial predictions that it would damage support for the People's Democratic Party have not so far panned out, and rather the pro-Kurdish leftist party is said to be polling slightly higher than they did in June. The risk of another vote without a winner is looming large and sending investors out of the Turkish lira, which has fallen some 8% in recent days. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Oklahoma State Senator Rick Brinkley resigned Thursday after pleading guilty to the charge he defrauded the Better Business Bureau of $1.83 million. Brinkley, who represents Oklahoma's 34th District, which includes Tulsa, issued a statement announcing his resignation, saying, Due to personal reasons, I hereby irrevocably resign my office as State Senator for District 34, effective immediately. Those personal reasons likely included six charges related to a scheme in which he admitted he embezzled money from the Better Business Bureau where he worked. The scheme took place between 2005 and 2015. Court documents indicate Brinkley stole $1.83 million from the Better Business Bureau for his personal benefit. U.S. Attorney Danny Williams Sr. said the senator stole the money to fund a gambling habit. Brinkley pled guilty to five counts of wire fraud and one count of tax evasion. As part of the plea deal, Brinkley agreed to pay back $1.83 million to the Better Business Bureau and $165,600 $625 to the Internal Revenue Service. U.S. District Judge Claire Egan scheduled his sentencing for November 20th. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports that New York City created a task force on Thursday to examine how it can rein in topless women in costumed cartoon and superhero characters who officials believe are aggressively soliciting tips for posing for tourist pictures in Times Square. Convened by the mayor and co-chaired by the New York City Police Commissioner William Bratton and Planning Commissioner Carl Weisbrod, the task force will report its findings by October 1st. Times Square, with its Broadway theaters, huge video billboards, hawkers, and tourists, has cleaned up its image in the past 20 years and turned itself into a hub for media and banking. That's a far cry from the 1970s when the city was practically broke and Times Square was synonymous with crime, peep shows, prostitution, and drugs. While the arrival of the topless woman painted red, white, and blue seeking tips is relatively new. Costumed characters such as Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Goofy, Iron Man, Thor, and Betty Boop have sidled up to tourists in Times Square for years for pictures and a quick buck. A Reuters witness could not find any painted topless women walking in the area on Thursday following a media storm over reports they were behaving aggressively. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sources close to area man Michael Husmer confirmed this week the unmotivated 29-year-old loser continues to waste his time living a contented life in his hometown near his closest friends and family members and has no intention of leaving. Former classmates told reporters the directionless bum has no ambition to leave his close-knit community for an expensive and stressful life in a big city and is apparently satisfied with remaining a pitiful nobody for the remainder of his unassuming existence. While most of us with dreams got ourselves dingy apartments and soul-crushing jobs in the city years ago, Michael just stayed behind, happy to live his humdrum existence of regular contact with his parents in a town of people who express genuine appreciation for his presence. Honestly, it's pathetic. In the time it took you to watch this video, you could have read one of Shakespeare's sonnets, listened to an etude by Chopin, or taken in one of the masterworks from the golden age of Dutch painting. The Onion applauds your excellent taste. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you're welcome to join us here toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. You can still talk about dating, which is something we've been discussing throughout the show tonight. One really lousy idea for a date would be to go to a movie, because you really can't talk during a movie, and so how can you really get to know somebody? It's just a way to kill uh, a couple of hours. I mean, you have that thing that you could like put the hole in the bottom of the popcorn bag, but uh, you know, other than that... <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Going to go see a movie is it's a lousy first date, but 
But after, no. <laughs> I mean, like, a, after a couple of days, and you've gotten to know the person a little bit, and certainly in a committed relationship, like going to a movie is fun. Sure, but it's definitely not if you a good, know the person, right? Yeah. And like I said, it's yeah. not a very good first time date for sure. Yeah, when I no longer have to ask permission before I put my hand down your shirt, then the movie's a good time. <laughs> By the way, with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian, Danica, and Cantwell. Uh, so the news about this, and it's been all over the place. This is from one of the upworthy kind of sites, Up Rocks. Regal Cinemas will now search your bag when you see a movie and people have mixed feelings. That's the headline. It's the end of an era for rule enforcement at the movie theater, at least at, uh, at least when it comes to Regal Entertainment. The chain has apparently amended their rules to search any and all bags entering the theater to enforce tighter security following a string of shootings at movie theaters in the past few years. It seems like a rule that has always been on the books, but... Mashable notes that many theatergoers noticed the heightened change earlier this month in places like Texas, Virginia, and Florida, with some theaters even adding signage to notify customers of the additional security. They actually have a photo of one of these signs from WPTV, which says, For the safety and comfort of all of our guests, backpacks and bags of any kind are subject to inspection prior to entry into this facility. Now, it doesn't say anything about no guns allowed on that sign. Now, maybe there's another sign somewhere else that uh, says no guns allowed. But if you're going to carry a gun into a movie theater, you can put it in the small of your back and carry it in on your body, and that will not be subject to a search. Right. Well, that's that's the, in the case of a handgun. Well, we've had these situations that are mass shootings. A lot of times they're bringing a rifle in there. But I'm just also that's true. I'm also just picturing this thing like what some you know, like minimum wage movie worker is going to go check your bag, <laughs> and then he's going to go find like a bag full of AKs and AR-15s, <laughs> and then it's going to be like that scene from The Matrix where he walks into the the building at the end, and the guy's like, "Holy sh." <laughs> Yeah, ran for the dump button. I'm better than that. You knew. Yeah. <laughs> you, you remember that scene though? When, I it's do like, remember yeah. that scene. That's when a it's great at scene. the end, when he's gonna go rescue right. Morpheus, and he puts the thing through the metal detector, yeah. and they're like, and they uh, shoot him on both your sides. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got guns all over the place, and the guy's like, "What?" The? And so, uh, yeah, I could just imagine some 7:25 an hour movie theater worker is like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to take your machine gun, <laughs> sir." Like, I don't right. think that's by gonna pan out so well. Yeah, by then it's too late. Yeah, if you want to go shoot up yeah. a movie theater, I think that you'll probably open fire before they confiscate your weapons. Now, I've been to a theater uh, where this happened, and it was one of those situations where I'd already traveled quite a ways to go to the theater, and so mm -hmm. I felt like, ah, crap. You know, I'm out, I should go through this because I'd already gone through all this effort to be in this place. Sure, yeah. But it was the first time I encountered something like this, and they were searching people's bags, ostensibly looking for cameras. Back then, this was uh, years yeah. ago, right? So the idea was that uh, you know there's these people that will go in, they'll take a video camera and a tripod or something, they'll set up in the back of a movie theater, they'll actually record what's going on on screen. They will then capture that into a computer and upload that to various different pirate uh, movie websites. They're called telecines, I think is uh, the term for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they look yeah, yeah. awful, in my opinion. I can't understand why anyone would want to watch. I've a movie seen like a couple that. of ones that were pretty decent, but most of the time they come out really bad. The, yeah, they look generally they look bad. You know, the sound's gonna suck. Oh yeah, because you're picking up the soundtrack from the speakers, and you know, so the, that's not a good way to record sound. Is when right. you're recording. And plus, whatever clapping or yelling that the audience is doing too. You'll pick that up too, or anybody standing up in front yeah. of the camera. You uh, definitely want to do this in a white neighborhood. So, uh, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. You're you don't get black, that? You're suggesting black people are more raucous in a movie theater? That, that black people talk in theaters, yes. I'm making that suggestion. And I, I invite anybody who lives in a black neighborhood to call in and correct me. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. <laughs> um, so, you know, that happened years ago where they wanted to search bags for, ostensibly for people with video cameras. And I can understand the motivation there. I, can, I get that. You know, they, sure. they don't want people recording the movies so people don't go to the theater and don't spend their money at the theater and therefore the theater goes out of business. I get that. Uh, but then, you know, the theaters came up with something that really couldn't be replicated at the home very easily, which is 3D. Yeah. So 3D started happening in what oh, I think it was 2009 with the Avatar. Something like that, yeah. Uh, James Cameron's Avatar was the real first big 3D release and that gives people I think the gimmick that they need, the excuse to go to the movie theater as opposed to just waiting for it to come out on Blu-ray or DVD. You know, if, if you can go and watch something in 3D, that's a gimmick that's hard well, to create. Well, and some movies just do look better on the big screen. I mean, come on, Star Wars looks amazing oh, on yeah. the big screen. If you're a fan of a movie, you got to see it on the big screen, right? But 
it's getting easier to have a big screen experience at the home. Sure. It's not that expensive. And some movies you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to go see that, but I, it's not worth to drive, you know, not to worth the, movie the 10 theater, bucks, not, not 10 worth bucks. the drive, not I'll worth I'll wait for know. it to come out in video or and whatever. And it's certainly not worth having your privacy violated, right? So if going to the movies was a cool thing, it's now become at at least at Regal Cinemas a lot less cool. Because you're getting shaken down before you go into the theater. And I think that we all know what this is really about. It's, concessions. It's about concessions. concessions. No more candy yeah. for you. I have a funny story about that. I once snuck in a bunch of KFC ch- chicken in my purse. That must. It, was it hot? Like, could, it was, could you smell it? It was, <laughs> it was pretty. I mean, it was right out of the theater. but my, uh, Right my out of the did, KFC? Right. And we were yeah. trying to go in, and it, we were running late. And he was just, it, it was Johnson, actually, that was with me. And he said, just stuff it in your purse. I'm like, are, are, are you kidding me? And he's like, no, just put it in your purse. I'm like, no, the we're eating here. The whole bucket? Or what? What did it come in? It was in? like 12 pieces, I think, like of the, of the 10. Doesn't that come in a bucket? It comes in a bucket. And yeah. Pre- it's a big purse. I, I wrapped it up in the plastic bag, stuck it in the compartment, zipped it up, went in, and no one looked so in my bag. So you took the chicken out of the bucket, put it in a plastic bag? Put it in a plastic bag Got that it. it was in there. Yeah, I wouldn't stick it in my purse. That No, there'd be grease everywhere. Yeah. That would not be cool. No, that would not. And it was a nice purse, so I would not let that happen. There's a big grease stain at the bottom of your purse. No, nah, that would not fly. We would have serious issues, but we snuck oh. it in. We had gotten uh, some drinks at the Dollar Theater and snuck Here it in. Here we go, Cantwell. Tyrone is on the line in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. <laughs> Tyrone. Uh, hey, uh, Ian. hey, you're on the yeah, air with, uh, um, with Chris Cantwell and Danica and Ian. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that I've never listened to uh, Free Talk Live for a long time now. Good. And, uh, you know, I've never really, excuse me? I said, I'm glad that you've been listening for a long time. What's up? Yeah. But, um, I'm, you know, it's just something about that Cantwell person you got on there. Yeah. Every cell in my body dislikes it <laughs> you're in good company sir um so he but, also dislikes himself so don't worry yeah uh yeah you're you're in good company being you know totally put off by me there's a, there's no shortage of people out there who feel the same way could you be more specific oh it's just everything it, it's everything just, about everything. you just yeah. it just ugly kid joe and just everything about me you hate <laughs> um so but um do what, you, what uh, do you think about cantwell's uh, comment about uh, black people going to the movies well can't, can't ask Cantwell how many black people do you know I, I know a few, but I live in Keene. So. Yeah, but you come from Long Island. Yeah, I'm right? from Long Island, and I've and I've had a number of black friends. And I know that once I say I have black friends, that means I'm automatically racist, of course. But, um, but I'm I'm saying like you dated I, a black girl. Once. Yeah, I I dated I, I dated a couple of black girls, and so um, I I certainly uh, you know have um, um, I don't I don't I don't I'm not even going to try. But do you, you ever you, you, do you live in a black neighborhood? Do you go to the movies once in a while? No, I don't go to the movies at all. All right. See, well, that, he doesn't comment. even want to go to the right. movies, right? You, you can't comment, I guess, on that question. Uh, look, I, he I probably get went it. a couple times, and it was miserable, so he stopped going. So, but Tyrone, you can't put your finger on why Cantwell so offensive. It's just something about the totality of who he is that just rubs you the wrong way. Yeah, and then he's he's so um, he's so he's so sure of himself that it's just like everything that comes out of his mouth is like just a gospel. When in actuality, I mean, he's just talking. I mean, you sound, sound insane to me most of the time. <laughs> so, like, but the thing is, though, like, when I speak, I try to speak with a certain level of authority because I assume, I presume what I say to be true until somebody provides me with evidence to the contrary, right? I mean, if I'm saying something, I I better believe it, right? I've seen you change your mind about stuff, Chris. Happens so I know from time to time. You've got that intellectual uh, capability. Uh, Tyrone, thanks for calling and sharing your thoughts tonight here. Uh, if you want to have it out with Chris, you're welcome to do so here. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free and especially if you've got thoughts on this bag search policy at regal cinemas this is free talk live this is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big bulky home cpap device mini cpap.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound for even more freedom you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards it's called the transcend mini cpap and right now you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536 
Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. This offer isn't available online, so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today. 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food Food supply for the incredible price of only $99 and it'll be shipped to you completely free. Call 800-274-3070 right now. That's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last. Don't wait. Call today. Every once in a while you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof. I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. When's the last time you went to the movie theater? People are going less often, I think, these days than ever before with the rise of home theater style entertainment. It's not a uh, inexpensive or excuse me, it's not an expensive thing to go and get a 50 inch or larger screen for your den or your dining room or living room or wherever it is you put those things. I love going to movies. I just don't go to movies as often as I used to as I used Why? to because the movie theaters here in Keene suck. Oh, you're so mean to the poor Keene cinemas. You know what? Yeah, I enjoy you, walking on the floor, having old soda stuck to my flip flops. I of enjoy are like that. having stale popcorn and having very uncomfortable seating and outdated technology. Wow. You are spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. Let me give you some perspective, Danica, as somebody who's actually been in Keene <laughs> for uh, near to a close to a decade. Uh, when I got here, the movie theater in town the, that you're referencing. 
they didn't even have digital in all the theaters. They had uh, they had two theaters of their six or whatever that could actually show 3D prints. At, uh, that happened a couple years after I moved here. So initially, they, there wasn't any 3D. And then finally, when 3D came out, they flipped one or two of their theaters to 3D. Prior to that, they'd only had two theaters that even had surround sound. So all of the theaters, you know, like four out of the six theaters, just had stereo sound. So it was really like you were going into the 1980s when uh, you went into that theater. That would be even worse. Now, now, here we are in 2015, the theater you're complaining about, and it's not the best theater in the world, but at the very least, they actually have digital projection in all six theaters now. So you're not dealing with film anymore at Keen Cinemas. They also have uh, surround sound in all of the theaters. So that's nice to have. Which was, that was a huge problem for me. It was like, I've got surround sound at home. Why would I want to go see a movie if you guys don't even have surround sound? It's just so the movie theater. dirty. Like, I feel like I have to take a shower before I go to the theater and then take a shower when I get back. Like, wow. it's just, it's gross. <laughs> no thanks. So, uh, if you're sick and whether you're sick of movie theaters or not, uh, Bitcoin is becoming a big deal all around the world. And maybe you've been thinking about getting Bitcoin. Well, you can do that over at ExpressCoin, the best choice for getting cryptocurrency. Whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin, they can hook you up. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Plus, they're a licensed money services business. And if you're in most of the U.S. or Canada, you're good to go at ExpressCoin.com. If you're in the New, uh, New York State, sorry, you're screwed. Uh, there are a couple of other states that uh, don't like Bitcoin, but... Most people in the U.S. and Canada can use ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it right from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. In fact, we've, we've even seen Bitcoin vending machines shutting down in New York State now. It's really it's gotten really bad there really fast since the bit license has come about. But for those of you in the rest of uh, North America, check them out. ExpressCoin.com. When you're there, use coupon code FTL. You'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. When you use code FTL, like Free Talk Live at ExpressCoin.com. The story is from Uproxx.com. Regal Cinemas apparently announcing official policy to uh, have the option that uh, bags uh, or backpacks of any kind are subject to inspection. That doesn't mean they're going to inspect everybody. It doesn't mean they're, you know, they have an obligation to do it, but they certainly are reserving the right to do so. And at some screenings, uh, some showings, they are doing so. We'll tell you more about that. How do you feel about it? To me, this gives people, in my opinion, this gives people another reason to stay home, to not go out to the movie theaters at all. But how do you feel? Charlie's on the line listening in Arizona uh, to K-Tox out of Needles, California. Hey, Charlie. Uh, Charlie, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, gang. Uh, it's Friday, and I thought I'd go ahead and uh, give you guys a funny story on searches. Yeah, please. Uh, years ago, uh, me and my friend and our girlfriends went to uh, see uh, uh, Boston and... Uh, the band? Boston, uh, the band? Seeger in, in concert. Okay. Uh, and actually, Seeger was the opening act, so this was years ago. But uh, they were not only searching bags, but they were frisking everybody. Oh. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, How did uh, you feel about that at that time? Women, well, I didn't care. I, uh, I I took an entire fifth of Uzo into <laughs> into the venue <laughs> so you successfully uh, got past the search. Oh, not a problem. You you just have to know how to do it right. Where did you store the fifth of Uzo? Right in the front of my pants. There you go. Nice. And you, you just got to act like, uh, hey, go ahead and grab me there. I'd like it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it was real easy. But I'll tell you what, uh, our girlfriends had to help us out. And every one of the security people were uh were astounded. They were looking at us like we came off the dark side of the moon. You know, where did they come from? Because, you know, uh, a fifth of Uzo is uh, pretty potent. But I, I thought I'd uh, liven things up. You know, if somebody wants to take something somewhere, they can do it. If they've got the, uh, the drive, they certainly can, and the creativity. Thanks, uh, Charlie, for the call tonight. Where did I see online? I saw a picture of a woman uh, sneaking something into a concert using her hair. And I forget if it was like a bottle of alcohol. I forget exactly what she stuck in there. It was something that was, I feel like alcohol would be too too heavy. I don't know, but I think but that I, you're, the the picture that you're referencing, I know I've seen, but it was really recent where she put a pony, 
yeah. ponytail hair around she, the vodka. She had, she, yeah, well, so it was vodka is what from it was. The picture from, if you're describing yeah. the same picture, then Maybe yes, it, it was. was I was. I remember I was shocked at like, oh my God, you could carry that in your hair. So what she did was she had like a tie off on the top of her head, like right where the hair came yep, off the back yep. of her head. And then she had another tie off at the bottom of her hair and she stuck the bottle of vodka in between those two tie offs and it held <laughs> inside her hair. And like it was no I problem. I could probably do the same thing with my hair. We yeah. just we just went to um, a, a Motley Crue concert at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And they, they check people on the way in there. They want you to buy booze from their vendors, obviously. Sure. And Connecticut liquor laws, by the way, I don't know if you're familiar with this. They're awful. Like they won't give no. you... They like you can't buy two drinks inside of 20 minutes. Like, you have to. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. How um, do they know? I could not even go up. I, I was I was there with two women. So I went to go buy three beers. And they would not sell me three beers. Because they, they weren't with you. The women weren't standing exactly. there. Exactly. Oh, wow. So stupid. Um, wow. And, and, and so we brought liquor in there, obviously. So I go and, like, and, I, and we know that they're going to search us. So I, like, taped a fifth of Jack to the inside of my thigh, you mm-hmm. know. And I'm like, you know, like, if... Uh, they they don't you know giving you a thorough search or anything like sure. that. But even like I um I had to leave my gun at home obviously, uh, and I just had my flashlight on the side of me. And they it's so stupid they're like well you can't have the flashlight on there. And my and and uh, my 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 date goes uh, uh oh I'll put it in my purse. And that was okay. And that was okay. Like what the hell is <laughs> what? Weird? you got to take my flashlight away? But she can have it. In her, what what's wrong with you idiots? It's, it's just still we don't like stupid. a flashlight. It's not it's not couture. Well, you know. that was a pretty smooth move on her part, right? Because otherwise you'd have had to walk back to the car or whatever. Yeah, it would have been ridiculous. It would have been like, fine, here, take my flashlight. I'll go buy another one, you idiot. She I mean, just used my flashlight privilege, right? is a weapon. Like, it has, like, the crenulated bezel that you can, like, yeah. smash somebody's face in with, and that'd be really uncomfortable. But well, it was a smart move on her part. She just used her privilege as a lady to kind of exactly. get, a, get Oh, a yeah, favor. I'll put that flashlight in my purse, and all of a sudden this is not a problem. Right. So I mean, I don't. Pre- I mean, I, I I certainly prefer not to be searched when I go into places. But I mean, we're talking about an institution essentially. It's, it's private property. They yep. have you know the right to you they know do. to monopolize you know food sales. They in their have place the right, and, and we have the right to complain about it. And yeah. we have the right to point out that this is a counterproductive thing, in my opinion, for Regal Cinemas to do to start searching people's bags or at least make it more of a policy. Because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was actually Regal that uh, that I first encountered a search at many years ago, o- allegedly over video cameras being snuck into the theater. Yeah. Uh, 855, 450, free. Maybe you work at a movie theater. You want to share your perspective? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KDArmor.com. Come and take it. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society, the wheel. 
the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Geneticists gathered at a conference this week to debate the ethics of cloning human beings and compelling them to fight to the death in a rock-filled pit for our amusement. Experts at the conference reportedly discussed questions key to the scientific field, such as the morality of arming hundreds of clones with maces and pitting them against each other on a small platform surrounded by molten lava. Cloning humans and goading them into viciously battling certainly raises ethical questions. It's important that we consider this topic with an open mind. Whether or not we should be stranding clones on a desert island, assigning them weapons by a lot system and making them murder one another tournament style remains a matter up for debate. And in this week's local news, a man is wearing a low-cut swimsuit as though a public pool is some kind of sun-kissed Sardinian cove. In other news, China's veteran reporters blast the decline of traditional state-run journalism. A new study finds human hearing is most acute when listening to arguing parents from the top of the stairs, and fireflies almost manage to salvage a local man's shitty day. This is the Onion News Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Yeah, I know it's private property and regal cinemas can have whatever darn policies they want to about searching people when they come in to do business with them. But it's just so unfriendly. I mean, that, to me, that's just some of the worst customer service you could possibly have. Now, I guess you could argue that if your customers are demanding that they be searched... You know, like that they don't, I I won't feel so safe coming to your business unless you Please search Please make sure everyone. I didn't accidentally bring my gun with me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, if it's true that people are so docile and so compliant today that they're actually welcoming this, then maybe Regal's made the right choice. I mean, this but, is the case that I've sort of made about, you know, the, the TSA and stuff, right? Well, there's there's a demand for airport security. There's a demand for airline security. People don't like the idea of crashing 30,000 feet into a building, right? That's true. And mm-hmm. so uh, I imagine that in the absence of the TSA or something like that, and airports, airlines are responsible for their own security, some of them will say, hey, we're going to make sure to go through everybody's stuff with a fine-tooth comb. And other right. airlines might say, hey, we're going to pass out guns at the beginning of the flight, and you just pop a cap in anybody who gets out of line i'd ride and, the ladder yeah as would i yeah. you know and you'd sort of have that we could know, let the market option. decide exactly. in that case and i mean we have that in the case of movie theaters i mean you might live in a neighborhood where regal happens to be the yep. only movie theater but uh certainly i'm not aware of any law preventing somebody from opening up another one that's true I, regal so if is regal's like, gonna search people and amc is not then you go over to amc and last you sneak I, your fried chicken in, in your purse last i heard regal was the biggest player in movie theaters yeah that They've got a number of theaters. Yeah, I think they may be the number one uh, theater chain. Uh, but, you know, Danica, for whatever complaints you had about the local uh, the cinemas, they don't have anyone searching there because they don't even that have a large true. enough staff. That is true. So if I do want to sneak in any more fried chicken or any more candy, I suppose that that will be easy to do there. Yeah, but- at the local place, you buy the ticket and you walk in and then you just go into whatever theater you want to go into. I mean, there's no there's nobody taking tickets right. at the local theater. I've never seen it happen. Even during, like, busy times, there's no ticket taker. And yeah, I know that it's not very nice to sneak in concessions because I know the movie theater, that's how they make their money. They don't make any yeah. money off the movie ticket. Like it's all about the concessions. But I, you know, I want to bring in a certain kind of candy. And what if you're not serving that kind of candy that I want? I'm going to bring in a different kind. Is it true though they don't make any money off the tickets? I mean, really? I it's understand. very little. It's not nothing, but it's right. very little. I understand that's not the bulk of their of their. Oh, sales. I had heard that they did make anything, but something could have changed. 
at it's, twelve dollars a ticket. I it's mean, a ridiculously small number, and yeah. I don't remember what I used to work. It's probably a I used to work at Lowe's yeah. movie theater. I used to work at a movie theater, and they told me what it was, and it was obscene. Like yeah. it was like less than a dollar, and that was when movie tickets were like sure. eight bucks or something like that. Sure, but at the same time, if it is a popular movie and you fill a theater, then you're talking 200, 300 seats. Sure, and, yeah. You know, there's a few hundred bucks there, right? Yeah. So there's a, a volume of scale or a scale. Anyway, let's go on with your phone calls and thoughts here. You can join us. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Movie theater searches, does it make you more or less likely to want to bother to go out to the, the theater? I say makes me want to stay home. I'll rent a movie or something like that and watch a Netflix or you know grab a Blu-ray. Let's continue, though. What do I need a theater for? I've got Pornhub. If you care about your privacy while on the Internet, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network. They encrypt your online data before it gets to your Internet service provider. And they do it right, offering OpenVPN, the gold standard of network encryption. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, plus there's Linux support as well. Unlike those other guys, ProXPN keeps no logs of your activities whatsoever. And now ProXPN has more servers than ever before, giving you greater speed and security. They accept credit card and even Bitcoin. You can get 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you buy an annual account with our code FTL50. That's FTL like free talk live and 50 as in 50% off. It can end up being cheaper per month than a good cup of coffee. You keep hearing about online privacy being infringed? Go to proxpn.com right now, use code FTL50, and take back the privacy that is your right. Let's go to the phones and the fun. Straight Razor, listening in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Cantwell. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello so there. that definitely counts me out of going to, uh, to, a regal, to any cinema that's going to search me. Um, I'm definitely not going to do that because... There are so many other ways to improve the safety of an area. Um, if you're so afraid of letting the, you know, general public per se carry weapons, then you can do other things like have someone in plain clothes that you know is qualified to carry a weapon sit in the theaters. Um, very, very passive things that you can do that are not going to inconvenience anybody, but at the same time will put someone there who can handle pretty much any situation that comes up now so i don't i don't i don't believe for a second that this is about guns i i i just don't buy no, it it's an excuse it's, it's an excuse to to basically prevent people from bringing in uh you know their own snacks and let's face it uh, look if we are libertarians we're people who believe in uh property rights and contracts if they're saying hey this is our theater and we have a monopoly on the the, the services here you bring in um if, if part of your agreement in buying the ticket the terms of use are that you're not going to bring in food you're breaking that agreement you're breaking that contract when you sneak food and you're not supposed to do it. But there is no contract. There is no agreement. You don't sign any kind of an agreement when you go and buy a ticket. Of course, well, you you are agreeing to the terms of use for the for the service, right? If I but buy a to, ticket to the theater, terms, I'm, I'm, I am agreeing uh, in advance uh, to, to do uh, things like not masturbate, right? <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> like I'm not supposed to do that in 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 regal theaters. If sure. I say, "Hey, <laughs> Princess Leia is looking really hot today," yeah. and I decide to rub one out, I'm going to get thrown out of my face, it's true. as I should, because there I'm, are certain unspoken agreements yeah. that are you uh, can't general... yell fire in a crowded right. theater. Why? Because the theater owner <laughs> Or, you know, doesn't want you to do that, well, and it's going to disrupt the experience for other people. Yeah, it could cause a stampede, and people could get hurt, and it's a real bad idea. There are certain unspoken agreements that are societal uh, agreements, if you will. Like, you know, when you go into a restaurant, it's expected that you pay when you finish eating. You know, some uh, somebody who just woke up out of a 500-year-long uh, you know, sleep wouldn't necessarily know that, and, you know, you'd be like Encino Man or whatever. There is a be- lot of idiocracy quoting here. I'm, I'm like, it. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't my my intention, but yeah, you're right. There, Encino Man came before Idiocracy, and it was. I, yeah, I know, yeah. but we, anyway, yeah, go on. <laughs> so um, anyway, where was I going with that? Uh, I don't know. Straight <laughs> razor, go ahead. But I, I completely agree with that. I think it's more of an excuse to to keep items out that 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 we're going to consume, you know, alcohol, those sorts of things. Um, but I also wanted to talk about this this dating deal. Um, online dating. Yeah, sure. And uh, I think it's I think it's one of the I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, now, if you're going, what you think online dating is a wonderful thing, or the hookup apps, or both? I think that I think that both of them. I think all of them are great because 
Um, now, the people who are against all this stuff are generally speaking from some moral set that they have. Sure, absolutely. Um, but who are they? Who are they to decide what my moral sets are? So I think really all of the all of these services, because you know they have them where you meet in person also. Um, all of these services are really great, and I think we'll cut down on uh, loneliness because now I can decide before I go on a date or before I go meet anybody what my exact intentions are and then go to the appropriate place for those intentions. Sure, absolutely. It's just a way for people to find a, find another way that they want to either hook up or some people may want something more serious, so they go to an actual like committed relationship dating websites such as say eHarmony or Match.com or maybe they just want to casually date and not necessarily hook up and go something like okay Cupid I, I think it's great. But might it be negative that we are reducing loneliness? Isn't it true that some people are lonely because they are miserable scum of the earth people who should not be breeding and okay Cupid and Tinder are helping them find that lowest common denominator and continue their awful DNA? <laughs> yeah but but, uh, but who are we to say that they, they can't they just because they're the scum of the earth doesn't mean that I I have the right to decide that they need to be lonely. No, of it's course we we're not we're not suggesting that we should go sterilize these people, sir. What I'm saying is that there used to be a little bit of a natural selection, like like you would be in an area and you were just awful and nobody would have sex with you, and now you go on the internet and you find another awful person hundreds of miles away, and then you go and procreate, and this is <laughs> terrible for the integrity of our species. <laughs> Look, there have been plenty of wonderful people that have made terrible kids. So that's, that's true. kind of a moot argument. Thanks, Straight but Razor, like for the I call said, tonight, man. I, I do appreciate hearing from you, as always. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts. They're welcome in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, 855 free. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Now a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock in my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are still welcome to join us, even though we're in the remaining moments of this edition of the show. But don't worry, we do this thing seven nights a week, live all seven nights. And Chris Cantwell does his own show. It's called Radical Agenda. Up until this point, it has been from 5 to 7 on Fridays, but I imagine it won't be from 5 to 7 permanently because you're here at 7 on Fridays. Nowadays. Right, exactly. So, I mean, I, we, I do live very nearby to this studio, but not in such a fashion that I can finish my program, do the post-production, yeah, no and fun. get here in a fraction of a second. It's no fun to, to, to run around like that anyway. So, what All were right. you thinking? I know, you, I know at some point you talked about doing three episodes of Radical Agenda every week. You're currently doing one. Yeah, I've been doing, I've been doing one episode two hours at once a week. And every once in a while, you know, something came up like we did like a, a special episode when there was the Republican debate. Right. So I talked over it. We did an episode. Uh, I think I was still calling it some garbage podcast at the time when I did a Valentine's Day episode. So if you go over to ChristopherCantwell.com slash subscribe, then you'll get on my email list and uh, you'll yes. be notified when these changes and special episodes occur, as well as get email updates with all of my articles. And that's something that you should absolutely do because I'm very interesting and entertaining and you want to be hearing from me all the time. But you're just following me on Facebook, and I'm constantly banned because social oh. justice warriors are trying to destroy my career. Facebook is awful. I mean, I, th I think that what you're doing is a good thing, keeping the content on ChristopherCantwell.com, driving people there. It, you do great writing, and Thank you're you, cranking sir. out, what, at least a couple articles every week? Usually. I was a little slow this week because yeah. I've been in New York and, you know, going through a number of things. But uh, usually you're going to—I try to write every day. Sometimes that doesn't occur. I'm not obligating myself to do that because, you know, when I was— making myself right every you day, do some that. of it was not top quality, yeah. right? I'm going to put out top-notch stuff. I'm only going to put out top-notch stuff, and so it's only going to happen when the when the creative juices are flowing. You've got to be inspired. That's right. For sure. So I go and I read about all the awful things that are happening in the world every morning. And the yeah, thank of, you for doing it, Chris, because like, I don't like it. I don't like to read about that stuff. <laughs> oh, I just I just go and, and I read, not only do I go and read like the regular headlines and stuff, but I'll go read the social justice warrior blogs and what all these lunatics uh -huh. are saying on the <laughs> internet. And it just makes me, like, I want to eat my gun sometimes when I read this just stuff. But instead for I, punishment. Yeah, instead I just bang on my keyboard until it sets on fire and makes everybody angry. So radical agenda, sort of up in the air as to how it's going to uh, shape. Up, but we, it's going to continue. In the next few days, I will announce a solid thing. And the scheduling might change around a little bit because, yeah. as you know, I've got a move coming up. I'm moving into a new that's house, right. and that's going to change the studio. Staying I've got in Keene. You're a, staying a, in Keene. A, 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 yeah, I'm staying in Keene. I'm not, I'm uh, sorry, Boston. I ain't no temporary resident. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but I, I am staying in Keene. I'm just moving uh, for the third time in just over a year. Jeez. I'm just moving across town again, and uh, and so I'm and I'm moving in with a, a very wonderful woman who is going to good be reason. a good influence on my life. And so yeah. my scheduling may change around a bit. But if you go to ChristopherCantwell.com/slash/subscribe, you will know all of the updates as they happen. And of course, Perfect. if you listen to the program on iTunes or Stitcher or watch it later on YouTube, what time you it airs care. live doesn't matter yeah. to you because you're just getting it on an RSS feed. So keep on doing that speaking of new york we got jose on the line he's on via skype jose you're on free talk live hey hey guys can you hear me yes, yes. loud and clear unfortunately excellent <laughs> oh, nice. oh thank thanks. i'm terrible i'm sorry to hear that you live in new york sir yeah oh yeah i know uh it's a great city uh, no it's not uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's a city. Uh, first thing i wanted to do is i want to welcome yeah uh, welcome you back uh, i think where, where, where did we go funny. 
I find everything you say incredibly funny. Oh, you're welcoming like, Chris back. Yes, he's okay. yes, Chris. Well, I'm clear. I'm like, well, thank you, sir. We've been he here. thinks Chris is funny. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think he's incredibly funny, and he challenges people and make them think. And I think uh, at the end, you're a teddy bear. Uh, oh, he he knows under... you, Chris. Oh, I think no, 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 I, I, Trust me, I don't want to help <laughs> you. Have you guys ever <laughs> snuggled together? I think you have a big heart, and you <laughs> hide it underneath this uh, facade of rage and profanity. And he's incredibly funny, and he's a beautiful <laughs> character. Well, so, thank you, uh, sir. Yeah, I mean, no, people, but, you know, the people who think I'm just this terrible psychopath are the people who, don't, who don't even bother to know what's going on, yeah, right? I mean, is, I, I will address things in a in a very cold and controversial way at times, but... Uh, there you, are keen police officers who have taken more time to get to know you than probably half the people who are critical of you in the liberty movement. Yeah, that's, really that's absolutely man. true. A greater so, percentage of the Keen Police Department likes me than a percentage of the Free State Project. <laughs> hey, Jose, did you call for any other reason besides to uh, welcome uh, Chris back? Yes, yes, yes. And you saw the regal Bloody thing. And I, I think you can reduce a lot of problems to one thing. And is that uh, we live in a culture where it's easier to attack the, the consequences of things, the symptoms, than the causes. So if you see something like immigration, right, and it's with my heavy accent, uh, you would think that I have something, some beef here, but no, I'm a U.S. citizen. I have nothing. I don't, I don't have any beef here. But basically what you're doing is you are basically attacking a, a consequence, and it's the lack of jobs, right, because of a poor economy, a mismanaged and stolen money by the state, and then you try to blame a, a, a group. And that's the easiest thing you can do instead of looking at the, at the economy. Uh, and, and you can see this everywhere, right? Like you, you see someone with pimples, and then what you sell is a, a, a cream to, to dry the skin of people instead of looking what is the cause of the, of the pimples, right, and trying to do that. Yeah. And I think in the case of Regal, is exactly the same thing. What they have is they have this dying model where they have overpriced popcorn and junk food. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to use uh, coercion, trying to avoid uh, or trying to to to. I mean, it's not really from... coercion. Yeah, it's not coercion. But I see. Go there. I see the point well, that he's making. I mean, it's yeah. like trying to do like suck down a bunch of Robitussin cough syrup to deal with your lung cancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. So, so instead of doing that, they they should have like decent food, right? And 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 sell decent food. And I wouldn't mind paying for good food. Now, you've been to one of these uh, cinemas, Danica. There's one in uh, Nashua called Chunkies, yes, right? Yes, Chunkies is awesome. Go they to sell like real food, don't they? Yes. Like, you, they, like with a waiter that comes out and serves you? Yeah, not only do they serve real food, they serve you alcohol, too. Uh, so a theater where you can actually get drinks and you can, you know, get and real it, food. And it's, like, decently priced, too. Like and you it's guys not... will drive an hour and a half one direction just to go to this Sure, thing. So absolutely. that's a real destination. I think you're onto something there, Jose. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing no from problem, you. No problem, guys. Yes, Take sir. That's Thanks Jose a lot, from buddy, New York for your City. kind words, especially, sir. Thank you. Yeah, especially after you insulted him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's um, that's what your fans like, man. Chris's ego is like yeah. this big now. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, a lot of people were tuned in to be strictly for the cruelty. Right? They want to get then, talked down to. Yeah, and so and I mean it's been interesting though. Like on on radical agenda, you know, people call in and if they do not improve the quality of my program, I will berate them and I yeah. will hang up on them. And you know what? That doesn't happen that frequently anymore. Mm -hmm. They get the idea. About the only one who still calls in who's awful is Dave, Dave in New, New York. York, and he. And he still calls in once in a while. And Do it's you like, say it to his face? What I, well, over the phone, right? <laughs> yeah. And I, I tell him, I, and I, I make fun of his autism. I'm, I'm ruthless. I'm <laughs> yeah, he actually called this week, too, and we had some fun with him. Web Keys on the line in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Web Keys. Hey, uh, so I was on the uh, listening to the radio today, and I heard about the stock market going uh, seriously down. And I'm, I'm looking oh. at, 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 yeah, it was it was, it was a, a big drop today. Um, I'm, I'm looking at an article right now. It's talking about Dow just uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished the day down 10 percent from its May record. Uh, they're saying the U.S. stock suffered from their worst loss in four years. At so the what's end of what's the relevance? Why should people care? And so I was I, I was wondering what you guys thought about um, how that applies to uh, the, the, uh, the commodities markets and to Bitcoin and um, 
uh, cryptocurrencies and and things like that. And what do you think about that? I don't I don't know that Bitcoin saw that big of a shift over this, but I mean, look, it, the reason that you Not should today. care about no. the stock market is because it's an economic indicator, right? So if the values of you know um, um, vast swaths of companies are sinking, there's something wrong. There's that's an indicator of something wrong in the economy. Mm -hmm. It might be that they were artificially inflated, as is often happening. That's you know we're talking about the Federal Reserve hiking rates, and now they've opted not to do that. Well, and there's the always some kind of economic meddling going on in sure. the stock market and the banking world. So, I mean, how can you even trust any of that information? Well, you, you, I don't, I don't, the, the, the I, trick I don't, is to have as much of it as possible in order to make predictions, especially if you're into investments and that sort of thing, or trying to prepare for the collapse of the dollar or something like mm -hmm. this, right? Now, there's, uh, there's some things that have been going on in um, China. There's, you know, the very big concerns over Greece. The, the prime minister just stepped down, which- In Greece? Yes. And now he's- well. And he's holding a snap election, so he might just get reelected and be back <laughs> in. But the the idea being that um, it it creates more instability, right? There, there was all this concern in yeah. the stock market. What might be it might there be a, a contagion, a crisis in Europe that spreads throughout the region, and, and this is going to have very deleterious economic effects and all these sorts of things. There was all this stuff that just happened in China, and now the Chinese government is going crazy trying to prop up their stock market, and this has real serious effects on on global trade and and your own economic. Prosperity. Yeah, there's and nothing you can do about it. I sure. mean, you know, there's a lot that you can do I, about it, but I, you I, you can't do anything about it I, after it tanks. But you can do a lot I, before and prepare for it. I'd stay the hell out of it personally. Hey, WebKeys, I'm sorry, but we're short on time tonight. Call another night. We can talk further about that. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of uh, Bitcoin, we got a new URL for our purse. It's saveatpurse.com. If you want to get signed up for purse and save twenty or twenty percent or more at Amazon by spending Bitcoin. You can now just go to saveatpurse.com. We'll see you tomorrow night, freetalklive.com, ChristopherCantwell.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Seditious Sirens is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,156 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236.
And HowWar.com reports with the June 7th election deadlocked and no majority government possible, Turkey's election commission has proposed November 1st for its next vote. This is sooner than many expected, though it won't be finalized until they receive input from the various political parties involved. The deadline for forming a government is August 23rd. After that, the current ruling party, the Justice and Development Party, AKP, will either have to get approval for an election date or President Erdogan will have to form an election government with opposition parties to make the arrangements. The AKP tried to form coalition governments with both the People's Republican Party and the National Movement Party, though neither was willing. The National Movement Party had apparently offered to join under several conditions, including starting a new war against the PKK, which the AKP actually did, but they also wanted to strip Kurds and other minorities of their citizenship and demanded the AKP tackle corruption. It is generally believed the corruption call was the biggest problem for them. The PKK war is looming large in the next election, though initial predictions that it would damage support for the People's Democratic Party have not so far panned out, and rather the pro-Kurdish leftist party is said to be polling slightly higher than they did in June. The risk of another vote without a winner is looming large and sending investors out of the Turkish lira, which has fallen some 8% in recent days. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Oklahoma State Senator Rick Brinkley resigned Thursday after pleading guilty to the charge he defrauded the Better Business Bureau of $1.83 million. Brinkley, who represents Oklahoma's 34th district, which includes Tulsa, issued a statement announcing his resignation, saying, Due to personal reasons, I hereby irrevocably resign my office as state senator for District 34, effective immediately. Those personal reasons likely included six charges related to a scheme in which he admitted he embezzled money from the Better Business Bureau where he worked. The scheme took place between 2005 and 2015. Court documents indicate Brinkley stole $1.83 million from the Better Business Bureau for his personal benefit. U.S. Attorney Danny Williams Sr. said the senator stole the money to fund a gambling habit. Brinkley pled guilty to five counts of wire fraud and one count of tax evasion. As part of the plea deal, Brinkley agreed to pay back $1.83 million to the Better Business Bureau and $165,000 $625 to the Internal Revenue Service. U.S. District Judge Claire Egan scheduled his sentencing for November 20th. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports New York City created a task force on Thursday to examine how it can rein in topless women in costumed cartoon and superhero characters who officials believe are aggressively soliciting tips for posing for tourist pictures in Times Square. Convened by the mayor and co-chaired by the New York City Police Commissioner William Bratton and Planning Commissioner Carl Weisbrod, the task force will report its findings by October 1st. Times Square, with its Broadway theaters, huge video billboards, hawkers, and tourists, has cleaned up its image in the past 20 years and turned itself into a hub for media and banking. That's a far cry from the 1970s when the city was practically broke and Times Square was synonymous with crime, peep shows, prostitution, and drugs. While the arrival of the the topless woman painted red, white, and 